When it comes to teams in 6A in District 3, there are a number of teams that can be mentioned from Harrisburg to Hemfield to Mannheim Township. But these two teams we have tonight, Central York and Cumberland Valley, are certainly being mentioned in the mix for a District 3 championship this evening. Welcome to Central York versus Cumberland Valley. It's a matchup here at Harry Chapman Field, and I am proud to be next to the proud son of Harry Chapman here tonight, Fort Chapman himself. This broadcast is proudly being sponsored by the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency, Roth Tractor, and FM Trust Bank. High School Sports Live is excited to be teaming up with Football Frenzy and Fox Sports, led by Todd Sadowski. This will be our third of 11 games this season that we'll have on High School Sports Live. And welcome to our Capital Blue Cross pregame show. I am Gary Sutton, alongside me, Fort Chapman. And kind of neat to be at a place that has your name on it tonight, right? Yeah, how about it? A little different look. They put in turf last year. This will be the second year for the turf field. It's been natural grass since the start in the, in the 1950s. Back last year, Cumberland Valley came into Central York and took it to Central York in the first half. Central York had a long winning streak going and they beat Central York 35 to 31. Since that time, both teams made the district playoffs. For Cumberland Valley, they're kind of tired of playing Mannheim Township. They lost last year in the quarters, then they lost again last week by 29 for Central. They have reloaded again this season, and one of the reasons they've reloaded this year, Jules Goff, six touchdowns, 268 yards last week. He has a one-man wrecking crew going to University of Pittsburgh next year. I saw that game last week against Central Dolphin. They were winners 45 to 35, and every time Central Dolphin would get back within a touchdown, within a, you know, a field goal, Goff took control, and he scored a big touchdown late of over 50 yards to clinch it. When you talk about this Cumberland Valley team, it's who they have to replace this year. Isaac Sines was everything a quarterback last season, but they do have a front line that uh, had over 25 yards, 100 yards last year. And one of the guys that ran behind that, Bryce Starrett, is back this year. He ran great against Central last season. I was just going to say, Gary, that Central defense, we did the game last year at Central. The first half, Starrett was all over the field. The whole Cumberland Valley offense was dynamic in the first half. Second half, they could struggled to get a first down, and Central York came back and made a game of it and only lost by four. Central York 10-2 and two last year, Cumberland Valley 7-4. and four. Both teams looking to make a dent this season, and this is a huge game tonight in the second game of the season for both. It's Cumberland Valley, it's Central York, it's big-time football right here on High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. So a while back, I thought to myself, I'm never going to own a home. I'm going to have to rent forever. I didn't have money for a down payment. I had no credit history, and I just got out of a divorce. But PHFA showed me that home ownership is possible. They offer me a low interest mortgage and a way to manage the closing cost. To me, this is more than just my home. It's a huge accomplishment and a new chapter in my life, thanks to PHFA. And welcome back to Chapman Field, where it's Cumberland Valley and Central York tonight in a big one. Gary Sutton, Fort Chapman with you here, high above the field here at Chapman Field, and we are ready to get it underway. Cumberland Valley won the toss. They deferred the second half. Central is going to receive, and they'll put that high-powered offense on the field right away for We're looking forward to a great one here tonight. Big house on hand for this one. Our second game of the season. Cumberland Valley 0-1, Central 1-0, and here we go. It is underway, and a long kick down. We'll go out of bounds inside the five-yard line. That'll bring it out Central, on the penalty. They can take it at the 35. They can also make Cumberland Valley re-kick five yards back. They're going to elect to take it at the 35. So Central will take it at the 35-yard line. And when you talk about Central, you talk about Jules Goff. Six touchdowns last week, headed to the University of Pittsburgh next year, over 268 yards. And he was dynamite against a great opening round opponent, Central Dauphin. Yeah, as I mentioned in our pregame, Gary, I was fortunate to see that game. And it could have gone either way for a lot of it. York, Central York scored right at the end of the first half and took a lead 24-21, which they kept throughout the second half and ended up winning 45-35. Cumberland Valley was a decided underdog at Mannheim Township last week. Township has a lot of players back and Township played a great football game and won handily over Cumberland Valley. They say a lot of times between week one and week two is when you make your most improvement of a football team. And let's see if Cumberland Valley can do it here tonight and play some good quality run defense. Ball in the 35 yard line for Central. First and 10, man in motion. And the handoff inside goes to Goff and taken down after about a one yard gain. Carter Vaughn at quarterback tonight for the Panthers. 
Of course, he had another quarterback a couple years ago who's fighting it out for a position maybe tomorrow night a little bit, a guy named Bo Prabula. Yeah, Nolan Bazalka with the tackle. He was unblocked, and he was unblocked because it was his own read. Quarterback has to read him whether he's going to give the handoff or keep it. He handed it off, and number eight for Cumberland Valley was right there to make a negligible gain. They may bring up second and eight. Nolan Bazalka, a tough kid, also on the basketball court as well. Bring up second down now, eight yards ago. Ball at the 37-yard line for the Panthers. Two sidecars in the backfield. Coming near side, being chased down, right at the line of scrimmage and being brought down for a loss, right back at the 35-yard line. And Cumberland Valley up to the task so far here in the opening two runs. Last week, Central York opened a game on offense, was unable to move the ball and punted to Central Dolphin. The first play for Central Dolphin of the season, they had a muffed handoff between the quarterback and the running back, and Central York got it, went right down and scored and took a lead. So it'll be third down now. 10 yards, caught nine. Straight back, straight back, looking to the middle, pass complete. And is it going to be a first down? Yes, it is. And a nice, easy pitching catch that time from Brooklyn Nace, a sophomore, as he caught his guy, Preston Frank Fink, for the first down. Our game Saturday night at High School Sports Live at was Harrisburg against York, and the Harrisburg Cougars several times had a third and long, and York couldn't get off the field and get the stop, and Harrisburg kept their drive alive and some scoring drives, actually. Cumberland Valley needs to get off the field on third and nine there. They can't allow Central York to continue these drives. It's a ball to the 45, 46-yard line. Fumble in the backfield, diving on the ball, and did they cover it? Looks like Central might have covered it, but a loss of probably two at least on the play. If you're Cumberland Valley's defense, that's what you have to think of, turnovers. If you can force a few of those in this football game, especially in Central York territory, you're going to give your offense some shorter fields. He's second down 12 now, ball on the 46-yard line of Central. Four wide set, two to each side. Shotgun, one back. Four man front for Cumberland Valley. Nace looks, nice pass out to the flat, plenty of room to run. And stepping out at the 40-yard line of Cumberland Valley, beautiful play there as they caught up that time with Saxon Suchanik out of the backfield. That had to be a blown coverage. The corner went with the outside receiver the whole way, and there was nobody in, in the flat to cover the number two receiver. He made a nice pass and catch there. Central York moves the chains again. And I'm going to correct myself. That was Jules Goff on the catch, actually, and that's not a guy you want out in the open field with the football, obviously. With no defender around him, too, Gary. First down for Central. Ball at the 40-yard line of Cumberland Valley. The Panthers are marching. Rolling right is Nace. Nace looking across the middle, misses his man. His target there was number 12, Preston Fink again, but just missing. Brooklyn Nace, a great story. Uh, played for that Central New York team last year, was so good, went to states in basketball as a freshman. So he's a guy that's used to playing in front of the big lights and in the big time. A little different when you're a quarterback here out in the big football field in front of thousands. Yes, but you could tell it last week that he had poise as an athlete. And right there, all Central did, they had three receivers to the wide side. They ran a flood route. Tried to hit the number two receiver on a deep out, and the ball was just off the mark. One of the things you like about this kid is he's very, very confident. There's a handoff to Goff. Goff slash it over the right side, and Goff with some good positive yardage that time. He's going to get the ball down inside the 35, near the 33-yard line, and that'll bring up a third down for the Panthers. 9-13 to go in the first quarter. After the incompletion, it's second and 10. You're thinking, okay, if you're Cumberland's defense, what are they going to do? They're going to get the ball to their stud running back. And sure enough, they did, and he still picked up seven yards, even though Cumberland Valley anticipated it. Brings down third down and three, and you've got to think this is maybe four down territory for the Panthers. There's a handoff again to Goff. Goff over the right side. Goff dancing through, and Goff gets the first down and a little bit more as he gets down to the 31, maybe the 30-yard line. Jules Goff with some tough running. Gary, if you're the Cumberland Valley defense, you cannot do what just happened. If you're the first man on the scene, you cannot get upfield too far and over-penetrate out of control. You got to break down and try to get a hold of Goff. If you allow Goff to get through that first wave, sooner or later he's going to be gone. Yeah, it's like testing the waters over and over again. He's going to be slicing through at some point in time. Again, six touchdowns against CD last week. Long cadence jumped them off sides. That's a five yard penalty. You got to be poised if you're the front four from Cumberland Valley on the long count. So it's going to be a five yard penalty to bring up first down and five. Is now, last week, Gary, Cumberland Valley's defense 
tried to play a lot of man-to-man -man in the secondary against the very solid passing attack of Mannheim Township, an experienced attack as well, and it really bit them. They're mixing some things up more here today. Brooklyn Nace, hand off to Goff again. Goff straight up the middle, Goff dancing through. Goff down in the 10-yard line, inside, down on the six-yard line. Jules Goff with some really good, solid running right here. One of the concerns for Central this year is they lost most of that great front line they yes, had they last did. year for, but they look like they've got some guys that are firing out right now on the defensive line of Cumberland Valley. Central York has had a tough offensive line for several years now. Just a few short years ago, they went the whole way to the state championship with their quarterback, Bo Perbule, and some other very fine players. So here they are lined up now in the 10 yard, make that to nine. It's going to be first down and goal for the Panthers. Expect the ball to stay on the ground. Man in motion. Goff's going to get it again. Goff bounces out. Goff again, stays on his feet. Goff slashes inside the three, down near the two yard line. Again, bouncing off the Absolutely. defender and then getting second efforts. Yep, I was going to say second effort, third effort. Both of those happened on that play. And when you almost had them wrapped up in the backfield for Cumberland Valley, you got to wrap and tackle. Arm tackles are not going to work for this football player. It's interesting to watch Goff in the positive motion, how his head and his body are out in front all the time. I mean, he's really churning always for positive yard. And he's using his vision, as he did on that play, to seek out a little gap where he can squeeze through and get in with his quick feet. Second down and goal now for Central. This is a 99% that they're going to put the ball on the ground to their big running back, but their play clock was going down. We got a timeout. Timeout for the Panthers. We'll take one as well. Second down and one with seven minutes to go. This is High School Sports Live to be on Fox 43.2. Thanks for watching, Mr. Pickles, again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. And welcome back to Chapman Field here. 64-yard drive so far and one to go here for the Panthers in for the first touchdown. If they can get it, it'll be second down and one for Central York. This drive started back at the 35-yard line. So far, it's been a lot of Jules Goff with a little pass sprinkled in here and there. One pass completed, in fact. Full house backfield here. Quarterback's going to keep it here. And that's the Wildcat. Wildcat brought down. Nice job by Cumberland Valley of sniffing that one out. And Goff brought down probably for a loss of one. I highly doubt, even though Central has a very dynamic field goal kicker, find it hard to believe that they're going to do anything if they don't get it here on third, but go for the touchdown as they're inside around the two-yard line right now. Caden Pine submarined in for that tackle, getting Goff right by the legs before he got started. Totally different formation group here. Three wide receivers. Third down Tight goal. In. Nace calling the numbers. Gives it to Goff. Goff straight to the end zone. Goff dives for it. Has a touchdown. Two-yard touchdown dive for Jules Goff. As crazy as it sounds, Gary, a lot of times you're better off using a spread set down the goal line. It moves the defense out a little bit, and they don't have as many people stacking the line of scrimmage. And Goff has a little bit more vision and room to operate, as happened there. So Goff at the 626 mark of the first quarter in for the touchdown. As I just mentioned, very, very good kicker here for Central York. Matthew Parker. Snap is down, kick is up, and looks like the kick is good. And Parker nails it. 7-0 with 6.26 to go in the first quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. This is High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. <sighs> I'm there. And welcome back to Chapman Field. 7-0, first drive, 65 yards for the Panthers. And Jules Goff capping it off with a two-yard run and four pretty impressive on that opening drive. Yes, it was. Central York is on the road for their first two football games. 
So it's nice for Cumberland Valley to be back at home after going to Mannheim Township week one. Central York won't have a home game till next week against the Cougars of Harrisburg. That should be a barn burner. We were able to do that game two years ago, and that went to overtime. Those two teams also met in the district playoffs last year, which Harrisburg won. Here's Parker, flat kick downfield all the way to the end zone, and no return on this one. And Matthew Parker showing you a little savvy there on the kickoff. The last thing you wanted, if you're Josh Oswald and his coaching staff and team, is to allow Central York to drive the length of the field on the opening possession. But it looked good, and they did a heck of a job. And, and due to that fact, due to that fact, what happens now is Cumberland Valley's got to try to find an answer. Come right back and get yourself an 80-yard drive. Well, and this is where you show some character, right? I mean, you're, you got up against it right now. You got a really good team, one of the District 3 contenders. And so Cumberland Valley is going to take over right here. Three Grant. receivers down here stacked and a bunch trip set way wide. Grant Shepley, quarterback, throws it out to the flat. He's got Save or Pines out there, his favorite receiver. And Pines almost breaking loose. Gets out to the 31, 32 yard line and a first down and a nice opening play there by the Eagles. Yes, it is. That was a play where the quarterback has the option to fire it out there, the old run pass option, or he can just take the ball and run the play that was called, which was most likely a, a zone reader handoff to his running back. They're doing the same formation the other way this time. Now, Central did give up 35 points last week to Central Dolphins, so they may be a bit uh, porous there. We're waiting to see. Shipley at quarterback. Shipley with a handoff straight down the middle. That's going to be Starrett's, and starts banging forward for a gain of about three yards. Takes it out to the 36-yard line. We mentioned in our pregame, Starrett's was unbelievably successful running the football last year at Central York. A big bright spot for Cumberland Valley, although they didn't think their line played as well up front as they expected last week against Mannheim. They're expected to, they're really anticipating this line to really be cohesive and really help with the running game. Four of the five returning starters right there on that line from last year. Look, look, pass, nice catch again out in the 50 yard line where it's taken out of bounds. And again, a good pitch and catch there. Grant Shipley showing you a nice arm here so far, picking Central's defense apart. Hit Bazalka. It was a really nice design. It was the only receiver. He was the tight end to this side, to the short side of field. He ran about a 10-yard out, and that was the number one target there on that play. And ball was right on the money for this rookie signal, signal caller. Guys, you know, Caden Pines is usually his favorite receiver here, number two. He's been their favorite receiver the last couple of years. Averages 19 yards a catch. Here you go again, blasting off that right side and submarining in on that play. Number 21 for Central, and that was Micah Bowers with the tackle. So a loss of one will bring up second down and 11. Sterich tried to bounce that outside, and his, he was better off in a run like that. When you're a big running back like that with not a lot of quickness, he, I'm not saying he's slow, but he doesn't have the feet that's nor your normal big time running back. He's got to get up inside there and even say, you know what, I'll take one yard or two yards. I don't want to put my team in a second and 11. He'll learn that as time goes on. Three receivers far side. One man back in the backfield with the quarterback. Long count. Hand off again. Starts again. Same play, same result. This time pushed back for maybe another yard. So Central has that play figured out right away. It's going to bring up third down and 11 now for Cumberland Valley. So the drive is stalled for the moment. What would seem to be a passing situation here after two running plays. They're spreading it out with two receivers to each side. Starrett's still in the backfield. It looks to me like it's Rardane at the quarterback now, wearing number 18. Dagan Rardane, a senior. Rardane looking for a man in the flat. Dangerous pass and then deck. Oh, man. Uh, he was looking for a receiver out there in the flat, and uh, that was Bryce Starrett's, and he just got drilled. Yeah. Young signal caller, even though he's a senior, he threw the ball out there up for grabs a little bit, and the defense is playing zone. They're reading his eyes, and the ball, as soon as that ball was delivered, He was looking ouch. there. Yep. Yeah, he was looking there the whole time. The defense was running right there. 
So Carmelo Valley have to kick it out of there with 3.50 to go in the first quarter. 7-0, the Panthers of Central lead it. 1992, a state championship here at Cumberland Valley. John Ritchie and company. Oh, good punt out of there, a little flat, but good roll, bounce for Cumberland Valley. Picked up there by Central. And brought down very quickly as uh, Carter Vaughn Made picked the ball up and uh, said, hey, nobody right. wants it, I'll take it. Yeah, back to 92, Cumberland Valley had a very successful campaign in 90 and 91. And then in 92, John Ritchie, along with Corey Gumby at running back, Brandon McKillop, the three running backs, and a host of Eagles. They did a fabulous job. Timberville's team went 15-0 and won the PIA Quad A State Championship over Upper St. Clair. Nice plaque up there to Tim Rimfel, right up near the uh, field house here. So first down now for the Panthers, their second drive of the game. They scored a 65-yard drive in the opening series. Got his Brooklyn Nace with a handoff inside Goff. Goff. Goff is just getting chunks of yardage right now. He's going to pick up about six on the play. It'll bring up maybe even seven. Bring up third down. Let's call it three. On that seven-yard gain, you can see Goff's ability for all you at home watching, his vision, his footwork. You know what you also like? The idea that he sheds tacklers. I mean, he's a tough little runner. First, Absolutely. first contact never gets him. There's the Cumberland Valley staff you see there. Led by head coach Josh Oswald, a former Cumberland Valley player, also a former head coach at Central York. And on the other side for Central, Jerry Janchik, highly successful coach there, had him in the state finals two years ago. Another handoff to Goff. Goff this time brought down in the back. But you're going to get him, you got to get him early, and you got to get him either by the legs or, in that case, they got him with the upper body. Yep, and they got the gang tackle. They got more than one guy on the spot. Yep. He's, tough to, he's tough to bring down with one guy. Great team defense there for Cumberland Valley. It almost looks on early blush here for, like he's much quicker going south right away than he is east or west. Yeah, and we're going to see a lot more of that because you know he's going to carry the ball double digit more times in this football game. So it brings up third down and four now. Big down here for Cumberland Valley to try to stop Central Cloth for York's momentum. It's Brooklyn Nace looking, looking. Nace going to get out of there himself. Case but he's to run. Nace to the 40. Nace out to the 43-yard line, and he's out of bounds there. Brooklyn Nace with a heady play. Looked downfield, saw he had plenty of room to run, and picked up the first down himself. Here's what happened there. Cumberland Valley went with a man-free look, so they played man-to-man -man on all four receivers. Free safety back to help out anywhere needed. The problem with that is, if your quarterback can get past the initial six players, the other five, other than the free safety, are not looking at the person running. Thus the big game. York scored 65 yards on 12 plays in 534 last time down, and right now they're in the first down again and doing what they do best, move the ball. Brooklyn Nace rolling near side. Brooklyn Nace looking. He's got a man out in the flat. And taken down there just inside the 50-yard line. A nice pass out there for Carlos Ethan. Is that number eight that caught that pass? I'm going to say it's uh, actually Jules Goss that caught the pass. Zero. I think it was, and it's tough to tell. It's tough to tell on those jerseys. Yeah, we're looking down there. The jerseys get tucked in there. And Orange numbers on the white. One receiver either side, one man in the backfield. There goes Goff, Goff, beat, uh, fake that. Instead, they hand it off this time to uh, Cameron Deal. Deal. Cameron Deal around the near side, so a little trickery there for York, or for Central York. Just a counter play, fake to the main guy, give it to the other running back. He's a senior. Deal and picked up enough to bring up, once again, a third and manageable situation. This is a second set of four downs in a row that they're in a run pass guessing game for Cumberland Valley. And a big third down here for Cumberland Valley. I'd like to get off the field here. Brooklyn Nace calls out the signals, trying to get him offside. Doesn't do so. Now resets. Nace. Man free again. Nace to the flat. Has Goff out there. Goff is going to be double teamed and taken down. And I think Cumberland Valley may get off the field on this series. Great job by the Eagles. What happened there, it, when a team is playing man free, a lot of times you can hit your running back out of the backfield because he's on a linebacker. But Save for Cumberland Valley, Alex Save read the play super well and made the hit. 
immediately upon the catch, which is forcing a punting situation. Linebacker Alex Sabu called his number a lot last year. This kid has been a star for a couple years here for this Eagles team. And so now Central's going to kick it away. Parker back there. Oh, and look at this kick. Wow. It looks like a college kick there, all the way back to the 11-yard line and covered well by Central. But man, oh, day. Talk about Matt Parker's leg, huh? Matt Parker, another of those basketball players, who plays in the offseason when he's not playing football and uh, shows he's also got some foot. So it'll be first down now for the Eagles, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. This is High School Sports Live to be on Fox 43.2. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials. Recycling matters in Dolphin County. Since 2001, Dolphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics. And 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring it on! That's everything. Receipts in the bag. Awesome. Say, how do you, like, budget? Hmm. Well, I have a spreadsheet that I update annually. Okay. And I round up on income and round down on expenses. Well, that sounds backwards, right? No, I'm pretty sure that's right. Income up, debt down. <laughs> Looks good on paper. Huh. Keep your budget in shape with our personal finance tool. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. And we get ready to start quarter number two here at Chapman Field at Cumberland Valley High School. What a great campus this is. And Fort Chapman alongside of me. Uh, big play there by Cumberland Valley to stop a drive and then a uh, great kick by Matt Parker. And Cumberland Valley is gonna start from your right to left. Hand off, starts, nowhere to go there. And a good tackle by Micah Bowers for Central York. So it'll be second down now, one yard gain on the play, it'll be nine to go. Last year, 35-31. Cumberland Valley won in that unbelievable game at Central. I mean, they were up like 30 enough in the first half and then hung on for dear life. And it was a nice combination with Hunter and Starrett doing the running. Two different type of running backs. This year, Starrett's is taking the bulk of the load so far. Three receivers far side this time. Looking over the middle. And a good pass downfield. He's got his man out there in the flat. 40, 45, 50, down the sidelines. And finally take it out of bounds at the 40-yard line, but not before a huge pickup on a great pass out there by number 18, Deegan Lardain. Now what happened there, Adam Somerville, if we get the replay, Somerville was not open initially. And he worked, you can't see him at the time, but he worked his way, the quarterback got out of the pocket, he worked his way back to the outside against a very good cover corner for Central, probably their best corner, Saxton Suchanik. Somerville and Pines are going to be the two guys you're going to hear a lot tonight when they pass the basketball. Here he is out in the flat again. This is Somerville, and Somerville goes down on one knee, but picks up four on the play. That's fine. And when a quarterback has feet to get out of the pocket and make something out of nothing, it's very hard for a defense to stay in coverage for that long. And you saw Cumberland Valley take advantage of it two plays ago to get across midfield here on this last play. And Second and five for the Eagles. Further back to the set, they ran the first possession with the tight end one way and the three stop receivers all the way out wide. Deegan Rardane showing you some arm on this series. 10.39 to go in the half. Yardim, one man back there, trips on the far side. And again, he's going to get it out to his favorite receiver right now. And his favorite receiver is making them pay downfield. A great job by Adam Somerville again. And another big first down here as they are taking chunks of yardage in the air. Watch this play again. Tyler Fry, the number 11 for Central, the outside backer, took a horrible angle. You got to go to where he's going to be, not watch him out here. Number 11, you'll see him for Central. He went way too far upfield and took himself out of the play. And then it's a three on two. But if you block well downfield, that's what that play's designed for. You're going to get big yardage. Somerville the target so far here. Angles of pursuit are so important on team defense, and it wasn't done well there by Central. First down and 10 at the 23-yard line of Central. Cumberland Valley on the march. 
Handoff straight up for Starrett. Starrett bangs in the line. Starrett's good second effort. Dives for the 20-yard line. May have gotten three on the play. Now, even though he only got three yards, Gary, he was hit at about a yard and a half. With his second and extra effort, he got an extra yard and a half. It puts Cumberland Valley in front of the chains, though, with a second and seven. Cumberland Valley on the move right now. Central now back on their heels for the moment. They took that quarter break and just said, hey, let's go to the air and see what we can do. And it's worked well so far. Now using a little bit of the ground attack with Starrett's. 9.20 to go here in the first half. Central lining up straight man to man across the board to the three receivers and the tight end opposite. Rardane calling the signals. Rardane with the handoff to get it Starrett. Starrett's in the middle. Starrett's going to get stood up at the 20 yard line and brought back. He may not have even made it to the point. Now, the difference there, Central York, Gary, went man to man with no free safety, no help over the top, which gives you an extra defender to put in the box to try to stop Starrett's. Third down now and seven. And again, you know you're in four down territory here for the moment. Again, they have those three receivers out there. They love to run that little screen play out in the flat. Well, if you don't get anything here, they probably will kick a field goal if they don't pick up any yard you're trying to anticipate. Rice is their field goal kicker. Expect play action here. Yep, straight back. Looking, Rardane looking, looking, trying to get out of there. Rardane caught. Nope, he's not. Rardane brought down inside the 20 near the 16-yard line. Rardane might have just been a little bit late getting out of there. Well, it wasn't a bad decision to stay in the pocket a little bit, right. try to find open receivers. It's going to bring up fourth in about four yards. So Kept it right in the middle of the field. Now, if you're Josh Oswald, if you have a decent kicker, get three on the board, he might be thinking, you know what, we need seven. The guy who kicks for is Andrew Rice. New kicker this year. Yep, he's a junior, but he's not going to go with the kicker. Now he's going to go for the first down, maybe more. Rardane. Calls it out. Rodane looking, looking, looking. Has a man in the end zone and not on the same page. He was going for the tight end that ran the, the, the deep out. Yeah, just overthrew yeah. the pass. But a good drive by Cumberland Valley, nevertheless, and laying down their calling card that they can hit Central's defense here. And a nice job getting the ball downfield. Obviously, you wanted more from that, but what do you say as a coach now? You come away with a drive like that and you kind of stalled it? Yeah, but the big thing is. You got positive yardage and you got down in the red zone. That's what you want. Uh, yep. I don't I don't fault the decision, Rose. Well, there's no right or wrong answer there on fourth and forty. Whether you kick the field goal or go for it, and it didn't work out. So the Panthers get it back. Brooke with Nace calling the signals. Nace hands off to his golf. Jules Goff over the 20. Out to the 25-yard line. And just like that, central off and running. And Goff eventually all the way out to the 30-yard line. He, I mean he even fooled me after that. And so Goff gets the first down. What a hard runner. Yes, he is. Getting in behind that front line for center, who's firing out pretty well. So Central sends two receivers near side, one far side. Goff in the backfield with Brooklyn Nace. First down and 10 at the 30. Hand off Goff. Goff. Hole on the right side, Goff across the 20, 35, out near the 37 yard line now as Goff continues to pile up yardage. Travis Sparks, our statistician tonight, keeping numbers for us throughout the evening. We'll try to keep up with Goff's numbers as well as uh, the numbers coming on the other side for Starrett's and the Eagles of Cumberland Valley. 6.52 to go in the first half. Don't forget at halftime. As our Jack T. and Valvo halftime report, the Capital Blue Cross and AT&T halftime stats and the Capital Region Insurance Agency first half highlights. Gary Sutton, Fort Chapman with you here at Chapman Field on the campus of Cumberland Valley. Second down, two to go here for the Panthers of Central. Empty set here. Tight end in a wing. There's Goff. Might be a jet sweep. No. Yes, yeah. it is. And Goff piled up at the 40. Doesn't have enough. Well, he might be close to the first down. We'll take a look and see what the short. spot is. It's just short. Yep. Which, if you're coming to Valley, you'd rather you get the first down so you can get on another set of trying to stop him on first and ten. Because, oh, they're going to make it a first down. They're going to so get the first down. The line. Ball just touching the 40-yard line with the tip of the football. I don't think he made it, no. If we, just like he was a smidgen short unless he landed there with the ball away from us. Nonetheless, first and ten central. Ball on the 40-yard line for the Panthers. They're working it again. Been all Jules Goff here so far. And Goff. Takes one step and is just brought down right there at the line of scrimmage. That looked like Save, Save again. Yep. Alex Save has been everywhere tonight so far. Dynamic player playing out of that linebacker spot. 
Cumberland Valley needs their front four to get into the offensive linemen, neutralize them, and give their linebackers room to scrape and fill holes. And they got to keep their angles of pursuit because this running back can be electrifying. Right now, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Jets sweep this way out of, out of the motion. To the spread, wing. spread set this time. Here it comes. Second down and 10. The fake of the Jets sweep bootleg. Brooklyn Nace looking. Brooklyn Nace with a pass out in the side. He's got his man out there, and that's going to be Colin Gurley with a catch. And Colin Gurley gets a first down, so Brooklyn Nace keeps his poise there and makes a big pass to get out of trouble. She did. They ran, they ran the jet sweep out of that formation. Expected it again. Looked like Cumberland Valley's defense was expected again. Here you see it. They fake the handoff to their star. And then the quarterback stays poised and hits the drag route. The five deep seven, drag. Five seventeen to go in the half. Central in twos. Cumberland Valley territory down at the 42-yard line. First and ten for the Panthers. What makes that play so tough to defend? You're trying to deal with a stud running back and stop him. All of a sudden, they don't give it to him. They go the opposite way. Here's Nace. Getting just inside the 40, down to 38. They thought they had him bottled up in the backfield. He still gets four yards out of the play. <laughs> this is a great example of a running back who's just itching to get a few extra yards. So he picks up only two, but it was going to be a yard loss. So he gained three after the initial contact. Jules Goff going to University of Pittsburgh next year to play. He'll still be a Panther by then, right? He's yes, a Panther he will. this year. He's a Panther next year. And if he hasn't already, he's going to meet the 76 Heisman Trophy winner at some point, number 33, Tony Dorsett, there then known as Tony Dorsett. Second down and eight. Out of Hopewell High School in Pittsburgh. Other than that, you don't know anything about him, right? <laughs> <laughs> One of the greats of all time. Honorary Big 33 chairman of 1990. Man. You think of some of the Pitt Penn State games with wow. Dorsett involved, they were pretty dynamic. They played his senior year, the year Pitt won the national title in 76. They played it at Three River Stadium at night. And he had a heck of a second half to take over that football game. Quarterback Matt Cavanaugh, fullback Elliott Walker. He didn't do too bad for the Cowboys either, come to think of it. Won a Super Bowl his rookie year over the Broncos. Goff with 15 rushes for 68 yards so far and one touchdown, but a penalty here takes him back. Be second down 13 for the Panthers. Cumberland Valley sitting in zone. Eyes on the quarterback. Across the middle again. They got Gurley right there. And Colin Gurley has become the favorite C receiver. Two of the last three plays, he's had the reception. Screen play, middle screen over the middle with a lead blocker as the lineman who can go downfield and that ball thrown behind the line of caught behind the line of scrimmage. You'll see it here. How about Colin Gurley? Another 6'3 sophomore here. And he knows what to do when he gets the football. Good job on number 52 for Central. Getting down the field there to make a block. The offensive lineman, senior Trent Beaverson. So it brings up first down and 10. 3.46 to go here in the half. There's Nace to Goff. Goff. Look at this. Goff just explodes through that. Looking like he was going to be brought down at the line of scrimmage. Instead, he's all the way down the 10-yard line with the first down. Great run by Goff again. It looked like he was nailed right there. If we're able to see this replay again, it's a great example of a running back who is able to stop on a dime and cut. Plant, cut. Watch this, Rick. Boom. Look at that. There it was. Right foot in the ground. The great ones can do it. And then he made another guy miss. That Phenomenal run. Fantastic run. First down. And 10. Goff gets it again. Goff. Bottled up at the 10, but shows some hard running there as he kind of forces his way down maybe to the nine-yard line. He's second down and nine to go. They can get a first down without getting the touchdown here. 2.51 to go in the half. Remember, they do have a pretty good field goal kicker here as well in Matt Parker. But I don't think Central's thinking about field goals right here. Full house backfield, tight formation. Guess who's getting it? Brooklyn Nace. Oh, and this time throwing a little bit too hard as intended target there was again Colin Gurley, the sophomore. Yeah, Gurley was on a drag route and was wide open. Just to disconnect, that ball would be passed and caught by those two most of the time on a little short route like that, but for whatever reason, it was a little bit behind him and he couldn't grab it. Nace dropped down and threw a little sidearm pass there, so that brings up third down now. Great place to watch a football game here. Chapman Field, third and eight for the Panthers. 
There goes Nace. Nace trying to get out of the pocket. Nace looking. Nace is going to get taken down right there in the middle of the field, and you may see a field goal effort coming oh, up here will. by Matthew Parker. Yeah, you definitely will, but good stop by Cumberland Valley defense. Eventually, number 55 on the tackle is D lineman. Shoeing, Carter Shoeing. You get a timeout on the field here for Cumberland Valley. We're going to take one as well. We'll come back. It's fourth down coming up for the Panthers right here on High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. The Jack Giambobbo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre-owned inventory across eight brands in five locations. Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stettler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and Giambobbo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Community's Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted Giambobbo number one. The Jack Giambobbo family of dealerships. Five great locations. Online at Giambobbo.com. Advanced Hoops is offering players a chance to play and train this fall for 10 weeks. 5 on 5, 1 on 1, 3 on 3, and a focused skill development factory that will have players ready for the winter season. Sign up now to play and train with Advanced Hoops. Add an extra rapid fire skill class for free if you sign up soon. Young players in 5th to 8th grade register at advancedhoops.com. Matt Parker in now for a 29 yard field goal. Holder is Ethan Carlos. Snap down, kick up, kick long enough, kick wide left, and so Cumberland Valley holds here in a big momentum stopper right there for the Eagles. Huge break for Cumberland Valley. They made their own breaks by playing good team defense in the red zone after bending and not breaking, and that kick almost automatic from the middle of the field was wide, what looked to be wide left. Wow, he just, he just hooked it left. So 2.08 to go on that missed field goal by Parker. He had plenty of leg on it, no question about that. Just a little bit of a hook to the left side. Heady play by Cumberland Valley's coaching staff there, Gary, to take the timeout after the, after the run to lead, let the clock over two minutes instead of getting it down around 1.30 now. They have the ball 2.08 to go. What's the mindset of Cumberland Valley here where they can back out throw it again? Yes, they will. Drag, he's got him. And looking for the big one. He's got his man downfield. He just missed his receiver. Oh, man, he had a guy down there he's trying to hook up with. Morant, not a bad decision there. That's you a got a guy that's open there. You got to go for him. He had a guy wide open in the flat, in the right flat. Basulka, who could have probably caught it and run for about 10, 15 yards. But when you have a home run poster out there that has a guy beat by a step or two, you got to go for him. That's a guy, Morant, the intended receiver, a 5'11 junior. And Rardane showing you some arm there. Digging Rardane. That quarterback, second down and 10. Now what you have to be careful of is not running the clock out too quickly and having Central get it back. Ordain across the middle again. He's got his man right there out, outside the 40 and he dropped it. Boy, he had his man, Caden Pines, who catches big catches. You're not going to see that happen that often. Good defense that time by Central, maybe to strip that away. Let's take a look here on the instant replay if we have it. I couldn't tell whether it got stripped or he just dropped it. It was tough to see. Rardane's getting plenty of time, though, to make the long throw right now. Before. Yes, he is. I'm interested to see what Central does here in this play to play zone or man on third and 10. It looks like they have an extra D-back, and he looks like they're going to line up and just play straight zone from now, their you, initial alignment. If you're Cumberland Valley now, you think you just get first down here so you can run some more clock, but there's still plenty of clock left in this half. They're liking a nickel look here. Central York is a draw play could possibly work here. You get a timeout again for Cumberland Valley. We're going to keep it right here with 157 to go. So if you're Cumberland Valley right now, what's what's the mindset here for Coach Oswald? Clock becomes a little bit of an issue here, and you're still not in great territory yet to kick it out of there. Central will get good field possession. Get yeah, your big concern right now if you're Cumberland Valley. Nickel defense. Central York showed you don't want to force a pass in the coverage and get a turnover on the interception. At worst, you, you got to tell your quarterback, at worst, let's just punt and play some defense. But you want to try to get this first down, but you don't want to force anything. It's a tough situation to be in. You just got done defensively, turning the momentum around with that field goal miss and stopping Central. Now you don't want to give momentum back to the orange and black of Central York. 157 to go in the half. Jack and Valvo halftime report coming up uh, at halftime. See the three-man front rush. They're going to rush three guys unless they blitz somebody. They're going to rush four with the blitzing backer. Good call. There it is. Starrett's going to get it out to about the 
Central York should call timeout right now if they're heading. Yep, 24 yard line, that's exactly what they do. So timeout for the Panthers. 148 now to go here in the first half, and things get intriguing with fourth down. You're gonna have to kick it out of there if you're Cumberland Valley. I don't mind the play call running the ball on third and 10. He almost got through there. But Sterritz isn't the kind of guy that's going to break a lot of tackles. He will occasionally. He'll run you over and break a tackle. But he's not going to juke you as often as, the, as his counterpart on the other side of the field. Goff will do. Sterritz is more of just like a good south runner, good hard runner yes. south. He's going to go hard and hit the spot quick. So now you've got a situation, 148 to go, and the punt is everything right here. No doubt. And the punt return, you got to cover. You got, number one, you got to protect the punter and get the ball off. Got to have a good snap. Get the ball off. Number two, it, you got to be concerned about the, the skill of Central York. Right now they have Carter Vaughn, a senior wide receiver DB who has some quicks back there to return this punt. Got to get a good snap here. Snap is good. Here comes Central. Pretty good punt near sideline, but it's going to go out of bounds right around the 46, 47 maybe of Central. Either way, they're going to get good field position. It goes out about the 48, the referee has it. And it, it, now you say, well, that guy kicked it to the left. It wasn't, he probably lost about 10 yards on a punt if he kicked it down the middle, but you know what? No return. That's right. No return. So nice job of getting it out of there. And now you want to play hard defense for 141 to go. And, Let's see what Central has in mind. Coach Jerry Janchik. Five wides here, counting a tight slot there. So five receivers, no backs in the backfield. So Brooklyn Nace with a lot of targets out there. Nace looks. Slant. Short, right across the middle again. Beautiful pass by Nace. He hit the guy right in the numbers and let him well. And that time, he caught Ethan Carlos coming across from the outside. 135, the clock's still moving. Almost impossible to stop when you have the wide side, all that room. Look at that pass and catch. Beautiful slant pass and catch there. Nace checks the wrist, looks for the play. He's got Goff back there in the backfield with him. Nace, look at Draw. Hands off to Goff on the draw. Draw. Goff is going to get banged down into the 39-yard line, a gain of maybe a half a yard. Clock still running, 113 to go in the half. Only one timeout left for Central. They're going to elect not to take it right now. Clock is down to a minute. They're going to snap it around probably about 48 seconds. They've been using Colin Gurley a lot tonight, number 24. Using a lot of time here. 52 seconds, 51, 50. It continues to go down. Nace takes it to Goff, looking deep. Nace dancing out of there. Nace is going to be charged, and Nace is going to be brought down in the backfield. Ball is loose. Was he down with it first? I think they're going to call him down. Timeout, Cumberland Valley, if you can get it. So that's going to bring up third down and nine. Clock is still moving. And Central may just elect to get into the locker room here. And it's third and, uh, third and a long way to go. And it's third in Rich Valley right now. And now taking the timeout is Central York, actually, which they're going to have to go for something big here. And quite honestly, if they can get down about, Gary, if they can get a 20-yard game, they have a shot at a around a 50-yarder. And I think this kid has the leg for, for Central. Matthew Parker. Yep. Yeah, he showed you some leg last time, even though he missed it to the left. And so 23 seconds to go. It's fourth down and forever, or third down and forever, 23 yards. Now, if you're, if you're Cumberland Valley and Josh Oswald, I was looking at him, then was thinking about calling a timeout. But there was no right or wrong reason. He may have made the right decision to let that right. run down a little bit because you don't want a high-powered offense like Central to get a big play and then go down by two scores, even if it's a field goal. So what are you calling this play for if you're in this situation? Offensively or defensively? Offensively. Offensively, I'm thinking if I have run some guys deep and put somebody around the middle of the field around 15 to 20 yards and try to hit that intermediate route, let them run after the catch and get a field goal before the half. Let's take a look at what Jerry Janchek's coming up with right here. Third down and 23, ball at the 47-yard line of Central. Just going to run it straight, run it. And they just decide we're going to give it to, Jan to uh, Goff and just see what he can do. He gets out to the 50-yard line, but... Cumberland Valley timeout. They're probably going to try to rush this. I'd send everybody try to block this thing. So you're going to get Parker back there. Parker with a big foot. 
for Cumberland Valley to win this game, what we've seen so far from the first half, they got to get a big special teams play. They got to get a turnover. They can't just rely on their normal offense to stay with the Central York. They got to get something else on top of that. Cumberland Valley, though, opening drive, 65 yards, 12 plays. It looked like, well, Central's leaving town. Take a look at the score. It's still just 7 nothing. That's right. That's right. So Cumberland Valley has weathered the storm here in the first class and that, in the first uh, half, and they're now down in the trenches right now. Again, we have a few more plays to play here. Last two years ago here, Cumberland Valley was right in the football game with a, with a favored Central York team. They got down and got held at the one-yard line. And the next play, Bo Propiola out of his own end zone, fired one down the middle, gone. 99-yard touchdown pass, and that flipped the game, put them up two scores, and that was it. But I was impressed with the way Cumberland Valley hung in there two years ago. And after beating Central York this year, Central comes in as the favorite. And it, Cumberland Valley's in the football game. Even though it's 7-0, they're right there, one score away. And here's Parker, last time he punted it, no return. And this time, another pretty good punt off to the side. No, going to be no return on this one either. They're going to get great field position all the way down inside the 10. Rolls down to the six-yard line, seven maybe, as the clock looks like it's going to run out here in the first half. Nope, three seconds to go. So time for one play here for Cumberland Valley. Which I would say, sit on take it. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. they probably just hand the ball off to the running back, a safer call. But Pizarczyk tried to hand the ball off to Zonka. And Herm Edwards picked it up for the Eagles and ran it back to win that game instead of taking a knee. So sometimes here, best bet's probably just to kneel it and get out of there. So let's see. Nowadays what it's so interesting. Even if they're going to take a knee, they're going to take it out of shotgun. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh -oh. It's great because teams are afraid to go under center. You don't do it that much. You're worried about the center snap getting fumbled. So they're going to stock on it and take a knee. They're going to take a knee, and that's going to take us to the half. Seven to nothing in a well-played first half here. Central leads Cumberland Valley. And we're going to have our Jack Giambalvo halftime report in just a few moments. But stay tuned now for a special interview with John Giambalvo from Jack Giambalvo Family of Dealerships and a special promo for Advanced Hoops Fall Basketball Training Program. All here on Fox 43.2. Guys, I'm with Chip Lawson, the Vice President and Commercial Services Market Manager for F&M Trust. Chip, I did my research. You're a football guy. You have to look forward to dialing in and watching these games and even with NFL coming. Charlie, I love playing football uh, growing up and you know this time of year always brings back fond memories. Great community time, great atmosphere, and uh, love it. F&M Trust has been in this community for years. Talk about that history and talk about why uh, being in the community is so important to F&M Trust. F&M Trust was founded in 1906 in Chambersburg and our corporate headquarters is still there today. We currently have 22 offices in South Central PA, in the four counties uh, in South Central as well as uh, Washington County, Maryland. We service uh, retail, commercial and investment and trust clients in, in those offices. We have a mortgage center in Camp Hill as well as mortgage loan officers in our community offices across our footprint. We have a regional headquarters in Harrisburg which is where my office is located and uh, we opened a few years ago and has really uh, grown that marketplace for us. Chip, talk about the interest in High School Sports Live and wanting to be involved in the education of high school sports and the student athletes that get uh, the exposure night in and night out. Absolutely, Charlie. And one of the things that F&M strongly believes in is supporting our communities. The bank contributes hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of volunteer service to community groups and organizations throughout the year. One of the areas of focus for us is education. So supporting high school football is uh, a natural fit for us. We know everyone involved in these games from players to coaches to cheerleaders and to members of the band really have invested their time and talents to represent their school and their communities to the best of their ability. It's also an opportunity to be a part of a great group of sponsors there that share F&M Trust commitment to community. Well, we appreciate you being involved in High School Sports Live and supporting our community effort, but you guys are doing a lot of neat things out there. Why don't you hit on a couple of those key initiatives? Our entire team is actively engaged in the uh, many of the nonprofits as well as the chambers of commerce that serve our, serve our region. For instance, we're donating time to assist with the rebuild of the Broad Street Market, which had an unfortunate fire earlier this year. We have and, and will be participating in the United Way's Day of Caring, where we support the uh, nonprofits in the area through volunteer hours. We have a team of people that volunteered to walk for the American Heart Association fundraiser at City Island. 
and we've received a tremendous response and our, our team is very happy to be involved, especially in after hours projects as well. What was that like playing high school sports and uh, just, just uh, you watching these football games on TV, you almost have to relate to these kids today. Oh, it's, you know, Friday Night Lights is the best. I mean, it's really tremendous. It's a, it's a great community uh, community event and, and, you know, towns light up when, when those Friday night games are on. What's your favorite memory as a high school athlete? On that football field, playing defense. You got to have one. Oh, I, I do. And it was a uh, pick six for a touchdown to win the game. How many yards? Uh, it was uh, about 60. Gary, guys, we got a guy here that if someone gets hurt in the second half, let's put him in. <laughs> Chip Watson, thank you, FNM Trust. Reaching the community, supporting High School Sports Live. We appreciate the partnership. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction sales and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best, minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I I'm never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. <sighs> I'm there. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials. Recycling matters in Dolphin County. Since 2001, Dolphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics. And 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring, Bring it on. on. And welcome back to our Jack T. and Valvo Halftime Report here at Cumberland Valley. A great first half. Central York, seven. Cumberland Valley, nothing here at uh, Chapman Field. For Chapman with me here, I'm Gary Sutton. It is our Jack T. and Valvo Halftime Report. And, and for when you look at that first half, Central went down the field, looked like they were going to leave town early. But guess what? Cumberland Valley showed you some moxie there on defense. Yeah, they hung him in there, hung in there. We're fortunate to have that missed field goal. And then they just held on, and they're down seven and down a touchdown. We talked about it a little while ago. They got to get some kind of break. Yeah, they really do. And uh, they moved the ball pretty well. They got it down to the 20-yard line, but couldn't quite cash it in. Central missed a field goal there and a chance to go up 10 nothing, 7 nothing here at the half. Let's take a look at our Jack G. and Bella halftime report on our Capital Blue Cross at AT&T halftime stats. Before we get to that, though, our Capital Region Insurance Agency first half highlights. And here you go. Jules Goff, the real deal. Putting his foot in the ground and making a play. The only touchdown of a football game. That was right at the 629 mark of the first quarter. 
And then Starrett's coming back on the other side. Central getting him. This guy, Rardane. Just a nice play out of the pocket. Got his receiver re redirecting his route. And that put them down in the red zone. Unfortunately for Cumberland Valley, they were not able to cash in. They went for it on fourth and four. And here you see Brooklyn Nace getting caught. Big play at the end of the first half here as you saw Save and company leading the charge and dropping him for a big loss to stop the drive. Nace seven out of nine in the first half. Pretty good passing. You take a look at the halftime stats right here and what jumps out at you there, coach? Just the, the, the ability to run the football for Central York and the inability for Cumberland Valley to pick up much on the ground after last year getting a boatload of yards in the first half against Central's defense. Look at the passing though, Diggin Rardane showing you a lot of ability to throw the ball downfield and he had a lot of time to do it. He was throwing for big chunks. He had Somerville, for example, for two catches for 40 yards. So he, he got the ball where he wanted to, just couldn't quite cash it in when they needed to. Remember, it's a lot easier to be a quarterback throwing the football when you have a running back that's picking up a ton of yardage and the defense is trying to stop the run. Clean game, no turnovers, only one penalty on each side so far, both well-coached teams. You take a look at the first half, we said Nace, 7 out of 9, uh, 82 yards passing. Goff, 19 rushes for 87 yards in the first half, one touchdown, three receptions for 21 yards. And Gurley, uh, two receptions for 38 yards for the Panthers on the other side for Cumberland Valley. Uh, Rardane, 5 for 8 passing, 90 yards, seven rushes for 12 for Starrett. They're going to have to up that number in the second half. And Somerville with two catches for 40 yards as we look to the second half here. What are you looking at in the second half right now if you're Coach Oswald for Cumberland Valley? Got to play good team defense. Can't give up any big plays, of course, because you're already down seven. But get that offensive offense churning, get him somehow get back in the red zone, find a way to get that ball in the end zone. Or at worst, get a field goal to cut it to four and with a lot of football left to play. Coach Janschuk knows his Panthers were in for a battle here right now. They scored in the opening drive, but had a tough time really sustaining the drive after that. What's he talking about at halftime? Developing that mix of run and pass, holding on to the football. You don't want any turnovers if you're Central York, and you don't want to give up a big play to the Cumberland Valley, which they gave up a couple, but they were able to tackle before the big breakaway. We're going to find out what both coaches are going to do here. Roots about ready to start the second half. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. This is High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. Guys, I'm with Chip Lawson, the Vice President and Commercial Services Market Manager for F&M Trust. Chip, I did my research. You're a football guy. You have to look forward to dialing in and watching these games and even with NFL coming. Charlie, I love playing football uh, growing up and you know this time of year always brings back fond memories. Great community time, great atmosphere, and uh, love it. F&M Trust has been in this community for years. Talk about that history and talk about why uh, being in the community is so important to F&M Trust. F&M Trust was founded in 1906 in Chambersburg and our corporate headquarters is still there today. We currently have 22 offices in South Central PA, in the four counties uh, in South Central as well as uh, Washington County, Maryland. We service uh, retail, commercial and investment and trust clients in, in those offices. We have a mortgage center in Camp Hill as well as mortgage loan officers in our community offices across our footprint. We have a regional headquarters in Harrisburg which is where my office is located and uh, we opened a few years ago and has really uh, grown that marketplace for us. Chip, talk about the interest in High School Sports Live and wanting to be involved in the education of high school sports and the student athletes that get uh, the exposure night in and night out. Absolutely, Charlie. And one of the things that FNM strongly believes in is supporting our communities. The bank contributes hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of volunteer service to community groups and organizations throughout the year. One of the areas of focus for us is education. So supporting high school football is uh, a natural fit for us. We know everyone involved in these games from players to coaches to cheerleaders and to members of the band really have invested their time and talents to represent their school and their communities to the best of their ability. It's also an opportunity to be a part of a great group of sponsors there that share F&M Trust's commitment to community. Well, we appreciate you being involved in High School Sports Live and supporting our community effort, but you guys are doing a lot of neat things out there. Why don't you hit on a couple of those key initiatives? Our entire team is actively engaged in the uh, many of the nonprofits as well as the chambers of commerce that serve our, serve our region. For instance, we're donating time to assist with the rebuild of the Broad Street Market, which had an unfortunate fire earlier this year. We have and, and will be participating in the United Way's Day of Caring, where we support the uh, nonprofits in the area through volunteer hours. And we have a team of people that volunteered to walk for the American Heart Association fundraiser at City Island. 
and we've received a tremendous response and our, our team is very happy to be involved, especially in after hours projects as well. What was that like playing high school sports and uh, just, just uh, you watching these football games on TV, you almost have to relate to these kids today. Oh, it's, you know, Friday Night Lights is the best. I mean, it's really tremendous. It's a, it's a great community uh, community event and, and, you know, towns light up when, when those Friday night games are on. What's your favorite memory as a high school athlete on that football field playing defense? You got to have one. Oh, I, I do. And it was a uh, pick six for a touchdown to win the game. How many yards? Uh, it was uh, about 60. Gary, guys, we got a guy here that if someone gets hurt in the second half, let's put him in. <laughs> Chip Watson, thank you, FNM Trust. Reaching the community, supporting High School Sports Live. We appreciate the partnership. More choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction sales and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I, I never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. I'm there. You may recycle your electronics, appliances, and mercury thermostats at the Dolphin County Recycling Center. In addition to eight local drop-off sites for recyclable materials. Recycling matters in Dolphin County. Since 2001, Dolphin County has recycled over 10,000 tons of electronics. And 1.6 million tons of recyclables like cardboard and plastics. Keep up the great work. Bring, Bring it on! on. back to Chapman Field here at Cumberland Valley High School. Seven to nothing as we get ready to start the third quarter here in just a moment. We look ahead to some of these schedules right now uh, for, first of all, for Central. Uh, after this game, they've got Hempfield next week. That's always a great game. Hempfield, one of those teams you talk about, maybe winning the championship in District 3 and 6A. And then you have Spring Grove, Southwestern, Dallas Town, Northeastern, Red Lion, Reading, and York William Penn to end the season. York High game, always the big game. But uh, if they could win this game tonight, they could run the whole table for the year in their particular uh, division. Yes, now Cumberland Valley, they got to, next week they're playing right here against Springford. Chad Brubaker, the coach from Springford, he used to be an assistant, longtime assistant at Wilson, had a lot of success there, has learned coming up through guys like Jim Cantafio, Doug Doms, and he's done a heck of a job in District 1 at Springford. And then Cumberland Valley starts their mid-pen play with 
CD East, and then a big one against the Cougars yep. of Harrisburg. Then they have Chambersburg, then another really big one against Central Dauphin. Then they have a rival in Carlisle, and then State College, who won the division last year, and then they finish with Altoona. So both teams have some solid games left on their schedule. We did Harrisburg last week. Everybody in York was talking this week. Is Harrisburg that good? Winning 50 to 20, having over 800 yards in total offense. What was your take last week on Harrisburg? I know it's really early. It's the opening game. You're not quite sure how good the opponent it was, but they That's looked right. awfully good last week at that game we did. Yes, they did. They, they lost two really tough football players last year. They were running backs and defenders. Hopkins and Williams. That's yeah. right. And they replaced them with more scattered type backs with even more quickness, if you can believe that. And their quarterback, obviously, Sean Lee, oh. his third year. He's a junior, third year starter. And I just was impressed. Their lineman did a nice job. And just got to wait a few more weeks to see. They have Mannheim Township coming up next week. That's going to be a heck of a football game. And a big time receiver in that Elias Coke. I'll tell you what, that guy can throw a ball near him. He's going to catch it. Darn right. And then do stuff after the catch as well. Absolutely. So we're just getting ready to start the third quarter here in a moment. Cumberland Valley able to weather the storm after giving up an opening touchdown. Total plays in the first half for Central, 33. Cumberland Valley, 16. So for Cumberland Valley, you want to start to even that number out here a little bit in the second half, Coach. Yes. I, Cumberland Valley's in a situation right now, down seven at halftime against a, a team that is favored over them. You're in a spot where you can steal this football game. And how do you do it? You got to mix up your run and pass a little bit. I'd like to see Cumberland Valley run a few more formations. When they do that bunch trips, if they can get some success out of it by throwing the ball out there, fine. They got to get a few more completions, get a little bit more yardage with Starrett's to put them in better situations with the chains. I'm just going to say, it seems like they want to get Central York to have to respect them on the ground. And so far, Central York has not had to do that. They've stopped on the ground and made them go almost primarily through the air where they've been pretty good, but they've not been able to put it into the end zone. Yes. And Cumberland Valley gets the opening second half kickoff here. Yep. So you get a chance to establish your momentum on offense right away. I was really impressed with Rardane in the first half. Digging Rardane, I thought he'd throw the ball pretty well, and I thought uh, he's got some good receivers out there in Somerville. He almost had a big catch downfield with Pines, number two, late in the, in the half, but was not able to complete it. So there were a lot of almost there for Cumberland Valley. Let's see what happens here in the second half as they get ready to get back to receive it. And Central getting ready to kick it off with Matthew Parker. Gary, I like the analysis because you're one big play away from tying this football game, and they came very close to doing it on a couple occasions there. Now you just got to hook up and connect on it. And for the most part, you know, you got to look at Cumberland Valley and say, we did a pretty good job of bottling up Jules Goff. I mean, he got 89 yards, but last week got 268. So, you know, you held him to less than half of that in the first half, and you didn't let any big plays come. So here we go. Parker getting ready to kick it off to start the second half. Huge foot. I mean, all the way, that's collegiate-style foot right there, taking it to the two-yard line. Cumberland Valley, some room to run right here. Near side, do they have some room getting outside? Out to the 30, out to the 34-yard line. Nice run back. To Either start a block the second in the back half. or a holding, unfortunately, for Cumberland Valley. Really nice job by the outside kickoff defender containing the play. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced the Cumberland Valley kick returner to get inside of him, which let his help come and make the play. Caden Pines with a nice run back there, but it's going to be all for naught as they're going to walk it back. All those little things that happen on a football field that go unnoticed often, that was one of them right there on the, on the contain man on the kickoff. You don't want that guy to get ahead of steam outside with a blocker in front of him, which he almost did. Only the second penalty of the football game here against the Eagles, but it's a big one. It's going to take them all the way back down to the 22-yard line where they will set up shop first and 10. <laughs> And that negates about 20-some yards of field position there for the Eagles. So Rardane still at quarterback. Same formation they started the game with, that bunch trips way up high. You can't see it from your screen, but there are three There they are. Rardane, handoff to Starrett's, and they heard what you were talking about. Let's establish that running game as he dives forward for maybe a yard. Central York, Gary, did not show this kind of defense up front last year. They were getting gashed the entire first half. Then the second half, they rebounded and played really solid team defense and limited Cumberland Valley, but they were already down by 30 points. Dominic Grove, number 10, leading the tackle there. So it'll be second down now and nine yards to go. Ball at the 18-yard line for the Eagles. Here's a bunch trips in tight to the formation. You can see them right there. It's going to be to, your, to the left of your screen, just Time. out of your screen. There they are. Man in motion, near side, handoff, get around the corner, out to the 20, 
22-yard line, maybe 23, 24, some hard running out to the 25-yard line, and coming up just two yards short of the first down. Nice, nice design play. They acted as if they're going to run the one-back handoff to the right, and then they come back the opposite way with, with a lead blocker or two. Simple oh, counter so play. So good, you there you see, starts. pulling Lyman and the guy from the trips, both getting good blocks downfield. Starts showed you some hard running there, which you saw last year in the game against Central. So brings up third down now and two. This is a big two yards here for Cumberland Valley. They're probably going to run the ball to Starrett, but they're just trying to spread them out. But there are seven guys in the box for the defense. There goes Starrett. Starrett's banging off the right side. Starrett's out near first down he yardage. He looks like he has it. Yep. Starrett's with some good hard south running here in the second half as he's going to move those chains. And Cumberland Valley getting a little momentum started here. 10.20 to go in the third quarter. You're watching High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. Gary Sutton, Fort Chapman with you. Chad Edwards and our whole Invicta crew out there tonight. Stay tuned, by the way, to catch Todd Sadowski at Sports Team on Fo Football Frenzy, reporting all the scores in South Central Pennsylvania coming up tonight on Fox Sport News. And uh, we will have our little check-in with him a little bit later on as well. So first down and 10, ball at the 27-yard line as Cumberland Valley gets their opening first down in the second half. That's off on both teams jump, but the Cumberland Valley wide receiver, you cannot do that. That was number two, Chad, Caden Pines, you gotta look for the football. As a receiver, never ever leave early. They may call it offsetting because the defensive end for central jump, but I would imagine it's gonna be against Cumberland Valley, illegal procedure, yep. The illegal procedure against Cumberland Valley, five yards, so it makes it a little harder. It'll be first down and 15 now, as the ball gets sent back to the 22 yard line. Air, mental errors that Cumberland Valley cannot afford to have, period. And yet the game only 7-0 right now. One big play away from getting it tied up. I know it sounds crazy. They just marked that six yards instead of five. They did. Uh, it was it, it, uh, uh, Unbelievable. 27 down to 23, supposedly. Bardane has his man down there. Oh, and just misses on an inside move down the field. And he had his man open. That was Hezekiah Morant. It was first and 10. You had a legal procedure on the offense. It says in the scoreboard it's second and 15, but it is second and 16 because they moved the ball six yards. I know I'm just repeating yep. myself, but this, I don't understand how not to get, I'm not a guy who gets on officials much, but you have five minus, football officials. You got to be able to, somebody, can somebody see that that's six yards and not five? 27 minus five is 22. Or 20, uh, yeah, there it is. So now it's, uh, Second down and 15 yards to go. Second and 16, actually, believe it or not. Here we go. Rardane calls out the signals. Rardane looking again to throw. Has the man to the outside. And again, overthrowing his man as he was looking out there for a guy who's been his favorite target so far tonight, Adam Somerville. Okay, we have a change up here. The officials on the chain crew just picked their chains up and move them back one. The chains were actually the ones that were off. It was the two chain of the three chain crew guys. Nothing wrong with those five officials down there, Gary. There you go. Our five officials tonight, as we said, Jeff White, Den Smith, Eric Dersher, Aaron Jamin, and Michael Taylor doing a good job here tonight in this one. The white, hat, the white hat, Jeff White's been around for a long time. He's very, very good and sharp. So here's Rardane. Two receivers far side, one near side, and one man in the backfield. There's actually Bardane. three receivers to the top because the tight end was hiding there with two flankers. They ran a three-receiver route, but just overthrown. Good rush by Central that time to force an early throw, and that's going to also force an early out here as it's going to be fourth down and 15, and they'll have to kick it out. In to do the kicking chores here is Andrew Rice, a 5'10 junior. We got to find out who's on that chain crew over there and give them the business a little bit. It used to be Mike Whitehead Sr. way back in the day. What a great guy. Those guys take a lot of pride in what they do, don't they? Yes, they do. Here's Andrew Rice ready to try to kick it out of here. Rice. Oh, good boot again. Rice near sideline. And again, he's going to make it so they do not return it as it goes out about the 42-yard line. Maybe 41. And it'll be first down now for Central as they get their first offensive possession of the second half. Cedar Cliffs legendary coach, football and wrestling, Bob Craig. 
When I was early as the head coach in the early 90s, he had some great teams at Cedar Cliff for all through the 60s, 70s, into the 80s, and into the 90s. Legendary, long-time coach. He said, I am not punting the ball to Harrisburg's punt returners. I am going to give up 10, 12 yards. I'm punting it out of bounds. <laughs> Here's Central to start the second half. Brooklyn Nace rolling near side, far side. Brooklyn Nace stops. Brooklyn Nace diving on through. He's getting, getting some yardage, about three yards out there. And first down for Brooklyn Nace. So smart play by the sophomore. Even though he's a first year starter, Gary, you alluded to earlier, he's an athlete. Yeah. He's a basketball player. You can see his, his just feel for the game and for athletics in general. You can tell that he's a multi sport athlete by the way he handles himself as a sophomore. In addition to be a quarterback, he's a heck of an outside shooter as well, I'll tell you. Was in the middle of a lot of Central's big plays last year. Central made it to states in basketball, and Brooklyn Nace was a big part of that. Here's Nace, handoff, Goff. First carry in the second half, Goff fighting his way forward for about three yards. Looked like he was stopped initially, picked up another hard three. There it is. Extra yard, yard and a half after contact. It's going to be a third and manageable, but about four yards. You know, people always look at the glamour of a running back, but they don't look at those kind of plays, and that's the reason he's going to the University of Pittsburgh. Those kind of plays, as well as those hard scamper throughs. I mean, this guy is a tough runner. Absolutely. He actually needs about two and a half right now. So even though they're in their own on their own territory, it'll be interesting to see. I expect golf who doesn't to get the football here here goes golf he's got it and golf it's not going to make it he's going to get jammed up nice job standing him up there short of the first down by the cumberland valley defense what's 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 the coaching staff going to do for central here are you going to try to go for it on fourth and one at if i'm midfield? central if i'm central right now i'm you know i'm i'm looking at just plain numbers i'm going to give it to rice and let him pit him down that's what he's going to do. Punt away. You got a weapon yeah, like that. Why play around? And you don't you, need a, it's not like you need half a yard. You need a yard and a half here, actually. So well, I can't play. And you want them to make, go the whole field, not half the field for a touchdown. Absolutely. So you're up 7 nothing right now. You're playing the percentages. And your and, defense is doing a heck of a job out there. Yeah. Matthew Parker is going to get it. Parker, another big bomb. Look at this. It's going to roll down to about the three. Oh, my goodness. All the way down. Can they stop it before it gets in? Man, what a job. Matthew Parker, what a weapon to have there. That's a, that's a college-style kicker right there. Yep. I mean, if, you're, if you're the return man for Cumberland Valley, you don't want to back up. And you want to come up and even fair catch that ball. But he had plenty of time to get that and catch it. So he and lets Pines it roll. Need to, needs to get on. You have to cover. You have to get that ball. Sometimes it's better to put two guys back and make sure you get under that thing. So now, if you're central, maybe you can pin your ears back a little bit and start to stun a little bit along that line for. It's going to be interesting what Cumberland Valley does if they give the ball to Sterritz, which it's expected to do deep in your territory. Central's going to be waiting for it with seven guys in the box. You have the guts to throw it right here, and if you do, you could end up with a touchdown. I'm sure they do have the guts. I don't think they're going to. Dagan Rardane back there. He's tight end trips, three receivers to the top. He's shown you some arms so far. We're going to hand it off to Starrett right away, and Starrett's going to bang forward out near the six yard line. Gets a little bit of room out near the seven before he comes down. Nice run by Starrett. Starrett cut it back to the two call side to guard the tackle to the weak side. Picked up a couple. It's like what, about three? Gary, two or three? Picked yeah, three. Up, uh, three on the play. And second down and seven. Ball spotted at the seven yard line. Coming up after the game, the Capital Blue Cross post game report featuring the Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game and the Hoffman Ford player of the game. Taking their time on this when they get the signal from the sideline, what they want to run. Gary, if you're an offense here, you know a, a miscue here could, it, could end a football game, put you behind two scores. Yeah. Even though there's some time left, but you know, figuratively. So here we go. One score standing up so far. There's Rardane again. Starrett's going to get it. Starrett's right up the middle. And Starrett's out past the 10 yard line near the 12. Good hard running by Starrett's here. Maybe a couple yards short of the first down. Going to be a long two or a short three, depending on how you look at this. For a third down and three, ball at the 11 yard line. Like the fact that they're establishing Starrett's right here on the run. Of course, they're maybe doing it because they're playing a little bit safer inside their own 10 yard line to start out with. Yeah. He's not really a guy pitch back, but I would love to see some kind of lead off, a little option here with one back, something to get on the corner and not option a guy and just pitch it out there or keep it as the quarterback get this first down. Looking to throw, where Dane has his man, flat, drops it, almost intercepted. That ball was up in the air for a moment. Five receivers on the route. They went for the short one to the right. Unable to connect. Even if he had caught it, it may have been shy of the first down. It looked like he's going to be tackled right away. 
That was Kyle Groman kind of slapping the ground. He almost had a pickoff right there on the fumble on the uh, bobbled catch. Several receivers went way deep, so let's see it here. Take a look right here. See he has the drag. That's the drag. He was open earlier. And Groman almost on top of that. So here's Rice in now to try to get it out of there. He's got to kick out of his own end zone. Central's going to get good field position here probably. 5.32 to go in the third quarter. Well played football game so far. Here's Rice. Rice with another good kick down near sideline trying to get no return. He's going to get no return, but Central's going to get good field position. They're definitely working on that, Gary. That's the third time we've seen a punt go out of bounds. Giving up a few yards of field position, but nonetheless keeping the ball out of the skilled player's hand for Central. And he's a good one. Number four, we mentioned him earlier, Carter Vaughn. Now you have Central already in CV territory at the 45, short field, couple first downs, two first downs, you're in field goal range. You think you might see a steady diet of Jules Goff right here, especially with the clock being on your side, the score being on your side, and the field position being on your side. Here goes Goff, straight ahead. Goff down to the 42, maybe 43 yard line. I love how hard this kid runs. I mean, he's carrying people with him every time. If they can keep establishing this run, I'm expecting them to come back with a with a boot off of the golf fake. By the way, speaking of boot, that last kick by Parker, 48 yards on the punt. That so brings up second down now, eight yards to go for the Panthers. That can't be right, 48 yards, because it can't be right. In motion, hand off the jet sweep. Around the corner he goes. First down and more as this time they handed it off to Carter Vaughn, his first carry That's of the, the night. That's the punt returner that we were talking about. Yeah, they, they got the ball at the 45 and, and punted from around. Punt goes from the line of scrimmage, the yardage, and punted around their own 15-yard line. From our scoreboard at halftime, 21-20, Wilson over CD at the half. Central off and missed their last extra point, so both teams have scored three touchdowns. First down and 10, ball in the 30-yard line, central marching. Goff, straight up the middle again. Goff bangs down, and again, he looks like he's down. He falls forward for another three right. yards. Puts you in manageable situation, second and, now you're in a second and six. That's oh. central off in that Wilson game, out of conference game, obviously, played at John Gursky Stadium, named after the legendary Wilson coach, who was an assistant in the Big 33 game to Mickey Minnick in 1970. Running back. The 73 Heisman Trophy winner out of Penn State, John Capaletti. So is that all you know about him? <laughs> <laughs> Second down and six, 341. Fort Chapman, always full of great information. There's Goff again. Goff bangs across the 35-yard line near the 34. It's going to bring up a third down now for Central. I was six years old, Gary. My dad said, come on, we're going to Hershey to Big 33 practice. Coach Minix, the head coach. I went with him. All of a sudden, I'm watching by myself because Minnick said to my dad, go coach the running backs. I know you're not, but go coach the running backs. <laughs> and then we went in the lock, the coach's office afterwards, and I saw John Gursky, met him for the first time as a six-year-old, and he was a tough guy. And then a few years later, my dad at Cumberland, we scrimmage Wilson. Big third down coming up here, third and five. Ball at the 25-yard line for Central York. They're up 7-0. Third quarter. Brooklyn Nace looking. Brooklyn Nace in the hole. Brooklyn Nace caught. Brooklyn Nace getting out of trouble. Nace nice trying to find a way to get out of there. He's inside the 30, but he's chased out of bounds. And a great job by Adam Somerville to force him out of bounds on the far sideline. So that brings up fourth down now. I'm expecting a field goal from Jerry Onchek. It's going to be a, it's at the 29, so it's going to be around a 46-yarder. I think his, yeah. his, his kicker can handle that distance from what I saw last week of his kicking ability. But it looks like they're going to... They're going to go, go for, for it. it. So Nace is back out there. Haven't seen any screen plays yet to Goff in this game. No, they? haven't seen a screen on either side of the good point. We've seen the quick passes, but not a legit. We had one screen of Goff. Yes, there was. Brooklyn Nace dancing, 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 looking. Nace downfield. has got a man open on the sideline. Has him. Did he keep his feet in? It's yes, he did. Great pass by Nace. Good presence there as he found Ethan Carlos. For the pass and a first down for Central. Huge play in this football game. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a screen to the to the running back. Here you see it again. Way to get out of the pocket and let it fly on fourth down and keep your foot in. Wow. 
There was a guy named Raymond Berry that used to catch oh, yeah, passes Colts. for the Colts that made that into an art form, and you saw it right there. Beautiful job of knowing exactly where you are Bef if you're Carlos. Before my time, but I've watched highlights on him oh. catching from Johnny Unitas. That screen, by the way, was to a guy over the middle. It was a middle screen, remember, with one lead blocker. Yes. Okay, here's Nace. Handoff. Goff. Goff with a little bit of room to run. Goff getting chased down from behind and tackled from behind. Looked like it might be Brady Hockenberry or else Nolan Bozalka getting him. But a good job of chasing down Goff from behind. So we've seen one screen in the second quarter out of Central so far. But you're right, a running back screen would be a nice play to see if you're Central York. Especially with uh, that front line coming pretty hard. And the ball is going to be marked back here. It looks like a penalty on the play against Central. So that play is taken back and a big one all the way back to the 31 yard line so first down now in 20 a 10 yard penalty against the Panthers 230 to go here in the quarter trips far side they're coming great everybody pressure. This time. Save got him oh, great job of coming out that time with the blitz and Save once again the big tackle there and dropping central back in worse field positions Brooklyn Nace goes down had an empty backfield, and Cumberland Valley came to the whole house. And let's talk about this as a quarterback. You got to know where your safety valve is. It was your second guy in trips to the left up there. Just throw it out there. You see him, even if it's incomplete. But the, the rush came so quickly. He was looking down to get the snap. And before you know it, he, it's OK. You didn't turn the ball over if you're Central Central York. But you got to get rid of that football. Now you're in a second and 29 rather than a second and 20. Probably closer to get home for Central than it is to get the first down right here. It? They're back in York. And if you're Cumberland Valley, that's just what the doctor ordered. Putting Central in a long situation after getting a big fourth down play. So a timeout for Central will take one as well. 137 to go in the third quarter. Central 7, Cumberland Valley nothing. We'll be back right after this on High School Sports Live on Fox 43.2. across Pennsylvania, families are living their lives in their own homes. Not long ago, none of these families believed it possible. And then they discovered there was someone who could help. What was once only a dream is now a reality. Welcome home. All sports and advanced hoops are teaming up to bring an NBA style training combine to South Central Pennsylvania. Players will be approved by Big Star from Raw Sports. This combine features skills and drills tests. Media day with Big Star in 10 weeks of training high school boys and high school girls who want pushed to the max with top advanced hoops traders. Want to sign up for this right now at advancedhoops.com. Second down, 29 yards to go. Ball on the 35 yard line of Cumberland Valley. Nace, 9 out of 11 so far for 108 yards. We had a couple big sacks so far. Draw. There's the draw to Goff. Goff slices through. You're going to get a hold, though, in the backfield. Flag Look is down. Look at this running effort. Look at this unbelievable effort. And it's going to all get called back here in just a second as they had holding back at the 36-yard line did Central. You see the flag down on the field. Let's see if it was against Central. It looked like it, it was. was. It was. It's definitely going to be a holding call. we got to see it here who, who did the holding. But what a what run, a run by Goff. <laughs> Highlight film. Nearing the end of the third quarter here with a minute and a half to go. There you see the head referee, Jeff White. And Josh Oswalt with a big sigh. Oh, that is there a little face mask, too. I didn't see the hold. But you look at Kopp. Look at the running. He shows you a little bit of everything in this, doesn't see he? See the stutter and go? Yep. Shows you that leg, then pulls it back. Like you said, the great ones do that. So Central just keeps going in the wrong direction right now. They had it all the way down at one point in time to the 16-yard line. They're now back to the 45-yard line. Which is where they started their drive. Yeah. So all exact that, same spot they started their drive. All that now they ground have 40 that they yards had, to go. All that ground they had gained, they now have lost back. So now, 126 to go in the third quarter. Second down still and 39 yards to go. And if you're Jerry Janchik, he says, what's going on? Nace. Man out in the flat. Going to throw a little bit down the way from him. Intended target was Carter Vaughn. Carter Vaughn's a guy you like to get in that open field, too, because when he gets it, he's a jet. Eagles. 
you got to tell your sophomore quarterback right here, we're going to punt, believe it or not. Didn't think that was going to be possible when you were down, when they were down at the 16 yard line, first and 10. But nonetheless, punt's going to be fine here. Our defense is dominating this football game so far. Do not turn the ball over unless it's a long pass down the field. There's another, nothing wrong with that. It's another, just like a punt. Another score from our scoreboard Downingtown East 21, State College 7. Wow. So third down, 39. You don't want to make any mistakes here if you're Brooklyn Nation. He's going to go for the whole, the whole thing. Down the field, just overthrowing his guy, but it's going to be pass interference. The only thing you didn't want to do if you're Cumberland Valley and you are going to be all the way down near the 10 yard line. And if you are the junior defensive back, Ryan Hunter, he had a little contact there, not a ton, but you just got to stay back. Deep is the deepest. They're just going to, they went four verticals, they're just going to let it fly. I'm not sure he didn't hold him just before the pass went over his head. D backs out there, you got to keep a cushion when it's third and a mile. Third and 39, stay back. That's just a hail and hope. Yep. And keep the cushion, keep turning and running as fast as you can with your head on the quarterback and zone eyes. Take a look, you'll see, see it, it right here at here. the end. Now you see where he has his hands on right there. And that's and where the much. contact was made. But not much, but they deemed it was enough. And just stopped him from being able to make it to that pass. You'll see it again here. Another good look. Get out of your back pedal sooner and fly back. Keep a cushion. So it's still third down and 24, though, to go. So even with the penalty. Yeah, not an automatic first down. No. So. Nace, here comes Cumberland Valley again. Nace. Got him. Nace gets bobbled up. That's about the fourth sack they've had in this game. So Cumberland Valley with some great piece of defense here as they have really stopped Central in their tracks. You're going to get a little bit of a cramp set up down here. Player in the middle of the field. You start to see that toe going back and the leg up in the air. We talked about it last week, early in the season especially. All you athletes out there, you before your competition, not just football, you got to drink a lot of liquids, especially water, all week long. Don't wait until the day of the game or the day before. You know, you talked about the improvement between week one and week two last week. They got beat by 29 to come to the Valley in Mannheim Township this week. Showing you some real moxie here as they've come back with a great defensive effort so far and now trying to match that with an offensive effort when they take over. Cumberland Valley's going to get the ball back on this punt. Let's see what Matthew Parker does with the punt here. He yeah. Really a, good team defense, though, to, to not only hold, but to they blitzed at the opportune time, got some sacks. Just played good team defense there, except for that one play that was interference, but it ended up not hurting them. Alex Salve, the leader out there in that defensive squad. I mean, he really knows what he's doing. There's Parker again. Look at this bomb. Don't fair catch it there. Oh, and he fair caught it in the end zone. Oh, he was he lucky? lucky. He's very lucky. That's going to come out to the 20. Oh, but a great hit there again. Uh, you just don't return Parker's punts, do you? I mean, what a beautiful looking punt that was. I know it's early in the season, week number two of the season, but punt returners out there, you got to know. Anything inside your 10, unless you're electrifying, you don't want to touch that. You want to just act like you're going to catch it up there, let you, hopefully it'll bounce in the end zone. If you're a super really good Ricky Waters who played on this field for Bishop McDevitt, hey, go ahead, here it comes. Go ahead and field that, but not in a situation like that. Picture perfect for him. Get Take away from that football and let it go in the end zone. He's, he's lucky almost he wasn't like a in two. bounds and it crossed the plane. He caught it crossing the plane. He was yeah, lucky. Fortunate. A matter of inches. So they had the ball on the one yard line coming out. Cumberland Valley, 51 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Need to get something going right now. Down 7 nothing. It's been that way since the opening 6.29 of the game. Bardain, handoff, Starrett. Starrett's hard running near side. Just lost his bounce. He had some room to run. Yes, he does. Almost had it there. He was making a cut. It looked like he just got a little too far ahead of himself. I like the misdirection play there. It actually gave what the reason to be why, it looks like he has a cramp. It gave Cumberland Valley once that oh, we're going to go to a break here. We'll take a break. We'll do it right now. 36 seconds to go here in the first half, in the third quarter, rather. We'll get that. It is 7 0. Central leads Cumberland Valley on High School Sports Live TV. Ah, break a box is toast. Recommend the whole rewiring. Well, that sounds expensive. Is that something a home equity loan could help with? No clue. But listen, if you're trying to make money fast, head down to the horse track and let it all ride on Old Cloud Stomper. Jockey's my cousin. Well, second. That works for you? <laughs> it will work. It will. Let me think about that. 
borrow better with our range of fast and easy loans. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. So Starrett comes off the field with a cramp, and uh, Save down with a cramp, Starrett's down with a cramp. Just giving out directions right now to Adam Somerville. You can't afford that if you're Cumberland Valley, your best defender and your best offensive player both down with cramps right now. And once those cramps come, they usually come back. That's the negative. Digging Rardain, two receivers far side, one near side, one man in the backfield with him. Rardain straight back. It's not Rardain this time. It's a lefty, and it's going to be brought down by Central. Big time play there for the Panthers in a big time moment, as was number 59. Yulanam Yukata with a sack. First big sack of the night here for the Central Panthers. Held onto the ball. Quarterback held onto the ball too soon. That'll come with experience. Both these Cumberland Valley quarterbacks, first year varsity players. And that's the end of the third quarter. And we go to the fourth quarter. It's seven to nothing. The Panthers lead it. It's a barn burger here on High School Sports Live TV on Fox 43.2. Back to the fourth after this. More choices. More laughter. More time to play. And less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal. To go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs. And to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. Jack Giambobbo family of dealerships. We have millions of dollars in new and pre-owned inventory across eight brands in five locations. Buick GMC, Hyundai, Mazda, Stettler Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, and Giambobbo Hyundai of Hanover. And we want to thank the local community for voting us the 2023 Official Community's Choice Award Best of York and Hanover winner in five different categories. Come out today and find out why your friends and neighbors voted Giambobbo number one. The Jack Giambobbo family of dealerships. Five great locations. Online at Giambobbo.com. Advanced Hoops is offering players a chance to play and train this fall for 10 weeks. Five on five, one on one, three on three, and a focused skill development factory that will have players ready for the winter season. Sign up now to play and train with Advanced Hoops. Add an extra rapid fire skills session for free if you sign up soon. Young players, fifth to eighth grade, register at advancedhoops.com. New quarterback in there. And very quickly, Carmelo Valley with a bang, bang play gets a first down out past the 32 yard line. As the quarterback in there right now is Caden Shonley. The left-hander. He hit P Caden Pines for a big play. Show only the six foot three senior in there. So a new quarterback in the game and gets him moving right away. Bubble screen. Good blocking downfield. Gets him out of the hole there. Nice job. So Shonley in there, quarterback right now, the lefty. Junior QB. Wearing number 13. A host of quarterbacks over the years have it, CV. Three receivers far side, one near side, handoff again. There he goes, he's got room Good now. Good run, it starts, starts moving forward, starts over the 50, down into central territory near the 42, and all of a sudden, Cumberland Valley, two big plays here to start the fourth quarter. And now they're across midfield, nice breakout by Starrett after coming back from the cramp a few plays ago. Isn't it amazing sometimes you put a fresh quarterback in there and just to change pace? Absolutely. Shonley leading his group out here, one via the pass, one via the handoff, and now two via the another handoff to Starrett. First down and 10, 43-yard line of Central. Cumberland Valley has found something here. Bobble up that time right at the line of scrimmage. Leading in on the tackle for Central, number 77. That was Raiden Bell. Also, nice job by Central York's defense coming off the edge. And Pressure on the running back, giving him nowhere to go. Loss of one on the play will make it second down and 11 yards to go here for the Eagles at the 44-yard line. Spread out there, tight end this way, trip receivers to the top. They're in the pistol. Shonley parking out the decisions. He's got three men on the far side, rolling left. Got a little room to run if he wants to. Has a man downfield. What a catch by Somerville! That's the play of the night so far. What a pass by Shonley to Somerville, and he was the only one who could pick that off. Wow. Big time throw by Shonley to Somerville. Yes, a very nice pass and catch there. And the official, do they have a flag down? Well, it's, it's, it's going to be a sideline warning against Cumberland Valley over here. 
Somebody was there. You got to be careful with those officials running those sidelines. Let's take a look at that again if we can. Watch Shobley on the rollout, looking downfield, and then Somerville just great hands. Oh, and we got a personal foul. For the sidelines, it was something on the sidelines happened. Now look at Shonley rolling out here. Nice look job. At, and look at this catch by Somerville. But it's all going to get negated. Somebody on the Cumberland Valley sideline got run into, the official ran into that guy. And they called a 15-yarder for, you got to stay back. Wow. It's unfortunate. Oh, and especially on a catch like that, well, that was the, the play of the game, and now it's all negated. Still first down. It'll be 10 yards to go. 34-yard line of Central. Cumberland Valley with some steam going on right now on the offensive side. Here's that tight bunch trips. You see it there to the top of the screen. Tight end down to the bottom. Show me. Handoff. Starts. Starts working his way down to the 30-yard line and starts running smoothly right now. Wow. He just kind of glides along, doesn't he? Yes, he does. They got some blocking help with the inside guy in the trips there. By the way, Quinn Valley up on Lower Dauphin, 21 to 14 in our scoreboard update. Now they're going to spread him out. Cumberland Valley is to the top with that trip set. I really like this quarterback on the run. But right now, with second and three, I, I doubt they're going to put it in the air. I think they're just going to keep it on the ground and run the legs of Sterritz and ride him. Second down there it is, toss. Pitch back to Sterritz. There he comes, cross the 30. Getting down to the 28-yard line. We'll come up about a yard short of the first down. We mentioned about running the option out there a little, little while ago. There was an example, but it was just a quick pitch. Yeah. But Sterritz, nothing against his ability. Just does He's not the speed guy that you, you expect out there. So... That's where J.D. Hunter last year was a good one-two punch with Sterritz. Talk about a tough kid there, J.D. Hunter. Man, he was as tough as the nails. So. And a heck of a good, aggressive basketball player, too. Cumberland Valley went all the way to the district final. Almost lost to the eventual state champ in yep. overtime, Redding. In a game we thought they were going to win. And so third down and a big one right here for Cumberland Valley. They want to keep the momentum going. Everybody stacked up on the line here. Oh, that moving on Cumberland Valley. The, the, the back, the back, the third back in. Move slightly, and that's going to be an illegal procedure oh, on them. My. Third and one now becomes third and six for the Eagles with 8.28 to go in this one. Way back in the 70s, Gary, I was a pony and midget quarterback on this field. And I remember thinking as a 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old, if I call a long cadence and go, huh, but we're not going to snap it, most of the time my guys are going to jump off sides. <laughs> and, and that's what Cumberland did there. They went with a long count to try to get the first down, but their own, team, their own teammate jumped off sides, and now it's going to be third and six. You kind of outfoxed yourself That's here a exactly little bit. That's exactly right. So third down and six ball at the 33-yard line. You know they're down in four-down territory right here for sure. Let's see what Shonley has. Been looking for Somerville a lot. Instead, they're going to look for Starts again. Starts covering the ball. Starts across down to the 31-yard line, maybe the 30 close. It's going to bring up fourth and manageable. Call it fourth and three. I don't think you can afford to give the ball to Sterritz no. here. I, I'm expecting to get this quarterback, a little fake to Sterritz, get him on the corner, run pass option. He seems to have a good feel for that. He says he's only played a little bit here, but the only other thing I can see them running if they do line up in that. That kind of triple they've been using all night. Let's see. Not this time. So they got Pines right here on the. Or Unless so, Pines Somerville. comes in and blocks, that's what's going to. He blocks and they run a little counter play with this running back. Aside from that, I think they're going to go to the air. Right here he goes. Yep. Shonley looking. Shonley getting chased out of the pocket. Shonley running, trying to buy time. Got a man on the sideline. Intercepted, I think, for Central. Intercepted or not, it doesn't matter because it was fourth down. So it definitely wasn't caught by Cumberland Valley. He's, if he did intercept it, he should have batted it down because he lost his team five or six yards. Cumberland Valley turned away again after looking like they had some real momentum going on. And now if you're central, you get the ball back with 7.07 to play, you're going to see a steady diet of uh, right Mr. Yard. Goff. Darn right yard. I mean, you're going to see the ball on the ground and again, grinding out two and three yard or two and three play uh, first downs here is exactly what central wants to do right now and, and run this clock out. 7.07 to go, 7 nothing. Central scored in their opening 
series of the game at 6.26 to go, and it's stayed that way ever since in what has turned into a great defensive battle tonight. Starris, yes, by, the, Starris by the way, the first three quarters had 34 yards in the fourth quarter, 33 yards alone. I wish we had the stats from last year because he had well over 100 last yeah. year at half time. Second half, they, they really, he really got bottled up. Another cramp there. That's Caden Pines this time. A lot of skill players for Cumberland Valley getting some cramps here in the second half. And if you're central too, you're on the 30-yard line, you got to be thinking, we get down around the red zone, we get a field goal, we can ice this game, go up 10. Well, you know who's going to get it. Number zero is going to be handled a lot. He's quarterback. Got... And you got a new quarterback in there for Central right now, running it, Maddox Kopko. A junior, six-footer. So Kopko in there, very simply just to run the football, obviously. So Central's thinking what we were thinking, they want to keep it on the ground. The problem was they didn't get any yards. And good team defense there, and Save on the tackle for Cumberland Valley. Alex Save's been all over the field defensively. You talked about the growth from week one to two. How about Cumberland Valley tonight with this defensive effort? Yes, and I really like this number eight, who's been on a lot of plays here too. Nolan Bazoka is also a, a receiver, tight end, and some plays on offense, making some catches. There's Nace back in, good pass across the middle. He's got his man open, but he lost a couple yards coming back to get it. And that again was Colin Gurley, who's been his favorite target tonight. He's had three catches. Who was that on the tackle there? It looked like Pines. I think it was Pines on the tackle that time. Brody Pines, yes. So it's going to bring a third down and six now. Ball at the 34-yard line. Do you put it in the air again if you're central? A nice safe pass right there. He had his man open in the middle of the field. But, but we've yet to see their stud, their workhorse. I think they're going to go to the workhorse. See if he can get six yards. Maybe even just get him out here on a pass play where he can get loose. There's Goff. Goff for the ball. Goff out. And he's got the first down past the 40-yard line inside up to the 41-yard line, rather, and so a first down, and you call it, Coach. Yeah. Goff answers the bell, so there's the first first down now of the group. Not only do you pick up the first down, what happens here, now you're thinking clock. Yep. 5.30 and running. Still 25 seconds on the play clock, now, so you can snap this ball just over five minutes. And you just want to ground out two and three plays to get a first down, two and three right. plays, get a first down, and that's where you're thinking right now. If you're coming about, you think we got to get up and tackle because I don't think they're going to throw the football much. Dare them to throw the football right here. Brooklyn Nace calls it out. Hand off, Goff again. Goff, straight forward. Goff right down the middle, inside the 50, down to the 45-yard line, and all of a sudden, you're handing it to the guy that took you to the dance. He's had 25 carries tonight for 105 yards before that carry. Even though Cumberland Valley had an extra man in the box that can't be blocked, you still, look at this run here. You got a running back that has great vision and great feet to get to where he wants to go in a hurry. And not bad defense by Cumberland Valley throughout this game. It's a little bit too porous giving the ball to Goff, but nonetheless, they're, they're making some nice hits. They're conversion on the football. Goff's just that much better than most players on the field, coming if up not all. Coming up after giving Cal the Blue Cross post-game report, still out ahead, but we have a lot of football to play right here. They put Goff in motion. And just hand off inside, and a nice run there for five by someone not named Goff. And that was the handoff that time to Colin Gurley. Check that, rather. Carter Vaughn, the other speedster. Central York football program in the last five years or so have had have had a lot of skill, tough players, some tough linemen, and they just have have a great work ethic in their off-season season weight training conditioning program, and it, it's paved the way to success. Their weight training condition is, is there's no peers on that one. Here comes a blitz. Hand off near side again, Goff, Goff just holding on to the football inside the 40, down near the 39-yard line. 3.35 to go, the clock is becoming a factor right now. You get this first down. Yeah, so I was going to say, these next two plays are, the, are a huge part of this game. Kamara's going to look to stop it right now yep. on third and about five. So timeout on the football field. We'll take one as well. 3.27 to go in this one. This is High School Sports Live to be on Fox 43.2. Lock it up at Hoffman Ford. Only Hoffman Ford offers two years maintenance included with any new 2023 Ford car, truck, or SUV order. Plus, lock in Ford's lowest APR rate today. Get two years maintenance included exclusively at Hoffman Ford. Why would you order from anywhere else? 
Who has your best deal on a new Ford? Hoffman has it. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman has it. 327 to go in this one. That 7 0 lead that Central got at the 626 mark has held up the whole night so far. And Central with the football right now. And a third down coming up here. What I'm doing? Giving the ball to Goff. However, don't be surprised if you see a fake to Goff followed by, like on a jet, fake jet sweep, followed by a boot. Maybe a Carter Vaughn kind of carry. Let's see. Trips far side. Goff right there. Sprinting to it. He got him. He did. He, you're exactly right. There's Carter Vaughn on the catch. Yep. That's exactly what he did. Nice safe route. Vaughn just went out. Short route. First down. Central keeps moving. They get another set of downs. It wasn't a play action, which I expected, but it was still a safe play. Got leverage. Outside guy. You see him here. He's going to get leverage. There's Carter Vaughn, a great athlete. Watch him. Look how Down the field. Play it. Cut. Ball in the money. Throw on rhythm. Get upfield. Stay in bounds. He should have definitely stayed well, in bounds. What a nice route by Vaughn there, though. Yes. Did everything right, but just fall down there at the end. Just fall down. Inbounds, they'll start the clock. That's another 25 seconds, it'll go off the play clock. And now Instead, you, the clock stopped till the ball snapped. And now you return to your regularly scheduled golf, I would think. No doubt. And there he is. And a good you tackle. You want a timeout if you're Cumberland Valley, I'd get it. It's only first down, you can use it the next one, but I'd use it right now on the running play. And they're going to, here they go, they just used it. Gavin Kendrick with a tackle there for Cumberland Valley. And so 3.14 to go, Central just pounding away right now, trying to get another first down. You get another first down right here, and uh, you know, let's say two more plays, you can pretty much start putting it away. Yeah, and if Cumberland Valley does get the ball back, it's gonna be with well under a minute to go. So and this, of course, you're also getting down right now into field goal territory here for Matthew Parker. Yes. So lots of things going on right now, lots of mechanics going on here at the most, you know, timeout in the field. So uh, take us inside uh, Jerry Janchek's huddle right now if you're central. What, what's the recipe here? Is it just more golf or more, you know, just little safe plays? Yes, I wouldn't even be surprised to see a, like I said already, a boot, fake it to golf, get the quarterback on the edge, tell him don't do anything. Don't risk anything, just even if you have to keep the ball and get upfield, stay in bounds, tuck the ball. Because Cumberland Valley's defense is obviously going to be really focused on number zero. In other words, as little ball handling as possible right here. I don't see him in the backfield there. They have somebody else. I can't see the numbers. It's so hard to see these numbers on the Central York. There's Delay, that screen play we talked about earlier. They haven't run it all night, and all of a sudden the screen play might yield some big yardage and another first down inside the 15, down near the 14, no flags on the field. So another first down for Central as they continue to confound a little bit here. Just when you think it's yes. going to be golf, it's not. And a very safe play. Watch he's, it here. Under route. It's just an under. It's not actually a screen because he's down the field, but it's, it's an under route that gets him. Want to stay in bounds there. It's tough too, but... If you're thinking, keep that clock moving. If you're central, Cumberland Valley's fortunate that he did run out of bounds. Ethan Carlos with another good catch here. Golf back in the game. Carlos and Vaughn have been the two favorite receivers tonight, along with number 24 this evening, Colin Gurley. So 3.06 to go now. Now central can pretty much just pound away. And you have a field goal here that can ice the game as well. Exactly. Here comes Cumberland Valley, and they're going to throw the flag, and it's going to be first and five instead of first and ten. I go back to the trying to draw Central York off sides. What happened? Cumberland Valley, they moved. The opposite, Central York got Cumberland Valley to go off sides. They were coming early here. You can see them. I don't know if you see the replay here, but they were coming early and just a little over exuberant. You got to practice early in the year, especially. You got to practice the long cadence if you're a defense. If not, the other team's going to jump you off sides several times during the game. I know in basketball we talk about respecting the possession, but right here as a defensive team and as an offense, you got to re really respect the possession and what you have to get done in it. Oh yeah, I'm jamming the box right now. It's Goff 99% here. First and five, Goff's getting it. Goff in the middle. Great job. Is that Save again coming up for the play? Yes, it is. I'll tell you what, good job there on the defense by Cumberland Valley. They have been tough all night long. They just used their last timeout. And I said Save there actually uh, Brady Hockenberry with the play there, number six. So we'll take a timeout. We'll come back, 2.59 to go in this one. It's not done yet. 7-0, the Panthers lead it on High School Sports Live TV. 
more choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. By the way, Bishop McDevitt in a while with a night winning 46 to 42. Were they playing a team out of New Jersey today? I believe so. So 2.59 to go in this one, seven nothing. The Panthers lead it. Second down and five. Ball at the eight yard line. And there it goes. And it is going to be an easy score right here. Is that, is that Jules Goff going in on the touchdown? Yes, it was. It was man-to-man -man defense on the outside. And the defenders did not see the run as they're supposed, not supposed to. They're looking at their man, and the man men just ran off, and then it was to pay dirt for Goff. 2.53 mark, and Goff in for the touchdown. He's got two of them tonight. Sealed the outside. Nobody on the edge and puts Central in a commanding position right here as in the kicks the extra point is Matthew Parker. So Jules Goff headed the University of Pittsburgh next year as Parker with the extra point. 2.53 to go in this one, 14-0. The Panthers lead it on High School Sports Live to be on Fox 43.2. Thanks for watching Mr. Pickles again. I'm happy to. Love this little dude. <laughs> hey, do you mind helping me fill out this IRA form? What feels good to you? Well, my horoscope said my moon is rising in the week of the tiger. So, like double, you think? Oh, for sure. The signs never lie. Just ask Mr. Pickles. Who knows? He knows. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Well, the Central Band happy right now over in the far sideline as Goff just scored his second touchdown tonight. He's got 29 carries for 130 yards, two touchdowns tonight. Okay, it's not 268 and six touchdowns, but in tonight's game, it's every bit as valuable for. And if you're that Central York defense, giving up 35 points last week to a very solid Central Dolphin team who's in a nail biter right now with Wilson in week two. You got, as you look at it, pitching you're a shutout. pitching a shutout right now. 11 plays on that drive, 70 yards, 414 they took. Boy, that's just what Jerry Janchek would have. Look at this kickoff. Can't run out of the end zone in high school football, so they'll yeah. be on the 20-yard line. How impressive you've been with Parker's foot tonight. Yeah, I was very surprised he missed that field goal. Yeah. Had plenty of juice on it. Yes, it did. I'm sure after the game, he'll remember everything uh, not as well as that. He's a hard-working kid. So now Cumberland Valley up against it. 14-0, 2.53 to go. You've got to score and score quickly. Remember, it's a never-say-die attitude in football. Why? Yep. Because of the onside kick. You can get the ball back without having the other team get possession by utilizing the onside kick. So you got to think score. You're right. Score within the next minute and a half. Give yourself a chance. And if you're center, you're playing. Your back's pretty deep right here. Here's Shonley. If they're in nickel, three-man rush. Shonley, straight back. Look, look, look. Shonley across here. Another great catch by yes, Somerville. It was. Make, not Somerville, rather. Check that. That's going to be Nolan Bazalka, the tight end, with some great hands. Great job of getting Bazalka out there for another great catch. 2.41 to go. They move the chains. Shonley again. Shonley looking. Got Bazalka again. Bazalka barrels his way down inside the outside the 40 to the 41, but they're going to need bigger chunks than that. There's two guys down in the field right now for the Eagles at a timeout call. More cramps. The only negative to that, now that the cramps, it stops the clock. But the only negative that is that would have kept the clock moving had there not been an injury and catch throwing the ball short. That's good during the regular part of the game, but right now you yeah. can't afford that. Yeah, you're looking at what, 15, 20 yards a, a gulp? Yeah, or throw it. If it's just short, the guy's got to get the first down or get out of bounds. Exactly. So we'll take a timeout right now. Got two guys down the field, 229 to go in this one. This is High School Sports Live TV. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I, I never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here.
I'm there. And Bazalka coming off the field. It might be a little worse than Cramps there. It looked like he might have pulled something on that play. But now it's second down, three yards to go, 227 to go here in the ball game. Capital Blue Cross post game report coming up right afterward. Chonley flushed out of the pocket, and this time Central's going to get him. Great job by Central with the rush that time. Sack on the play, number 11, Tyler and leading the tackle, Tyler Fry. Chonley had his eyes on one receiver coming out here. And let's see if he tries to hurry. And he wasn't open and got too much pressure too quickly. Third and 17, Central coming again. Central rushing him out of there. Shonley looking, looking, running for his life right now. Shonley trying to get down the field. Shonley steps out before the first down. I, I like his poise and presence out there. There's nothing he could have done with that except throw the ball away. Once that pressure came, he had nowhere to go. He's a big kid, he'll too. Learn from that. Yes, he'll learn from that. Yes, he is. He's 6'3", over 200 pounds. So that brings up fourth down and eight. This is the final offensive play pretty much of the game here for Cumberland Valley. They keep it going right now. Shonley with trips near side. Usually likes to find Somerville in this kind of situation, number 11. There's Shonley, Shonley look, Shonley deep. And on, not on the same page with Somerville, as Somerville turned in and he threw the ball out. So that would appear to be the final offensive play of the game here for Cumberland Valley. And now Central can afford to just sit on it with 151 to go. They can actually take three knees. Incomplete pass. Sacks oh, that's the yeah, sit on it. Yeah, just, that's all she wrote. You're right. So here's Central now with the football and the lead 14-0. This has been a grinder tonight. Great crowd tonight. Central York student section. They came in with the hard hats and the as the maintenance men, maybe the PennDOT crew, and they had a bunch of them. They had a bunch of them last week at Central Off and came all the way from Central York. It's very impressive to see these great high school crowds and the fan bases of these two programs. See if we can get a picture over the far side there of the Central crew. They're in the, uh, you'd see PennDOT out there with the vests on and the hard hats. They're over the far sideline in the stands, and uh, they have been active tonight. Yep, they were all wearing white last week at Central Off in an away game for them. And Central gets their first home game next week against Hempfield. And again for next week, uh, it doesn't get any easier for Cumberland Valley. They're playing Springford. And of course, then they have Harrisburg coming up on the 22nd of uh, September and State College out ahead at the 20th. State there College you, is down tonight. Them. Yep, there they are, the hard hats. And they, I'll tell you, they put the hard hats on tonight here. So here's Central now. You're going to see a real tight formation. You're going to see two backs behind the quarterback. Nobody's going to let that football go anywhere but forward. Not two backs behind the quarterback. They're going to do it from shotgun as we see nowadays. And there you go. Brooklyn Nace takes the first knee, and that's going to run the clock down, the first Brooklyn chunk. Takes the knee if anybody would have told us, Gary, 20, even 20 years ago, let alone 30, 40, if they said teams in high school football are going to take a knee by lining up in shotgun almost all the time, we'd have had a puzzled look on our face. Gerard Dane tonight, by the way, uh, 7 to 14 for 110 yards. Uh, Nace tonight, 12 for 15 for 139 yards passing, but he got sacked a bunch. Give credit to Cumberland Valley and that great defense they have, those linebackers led by Save in that front line for Cumberland Valley tonight who played an outstanding game. There's too much golf. Goes Nace down again, second knee. Interestingly, Cumberland's defense did enough for the win. Their offense just needs to be able to produce a little bit more, and that's going to take some time. They got some inexperienced, newer players. Yep. Now they lost some good players last year to, to graduation, including their quarterback and running back. Now do you think the, the Shonley get a little bit more playing time next week, or does Rardane stay in there? That's a choice again for Coach sure, Oswald. Sure, but he's got a few options there. Yes, he does. Uh, both of them, I thought, showed some really good stuff here tonight. Now down to 36 seconds. It's going to be the final knee of the game as Nace takes it. The sophomore with a nice job tonight, only missing three passes and making some pretty good decisions late there to get him down the field for that last touchdown. But Central is going to win it here tonight. They're going to go to 2-0 and overall with a big win over CD last week and now another big win here on the road 
Both their opening two wins on the road against a very game Cumberland Valley team who improved a lot after that 29-point loss last week to Vietnam Township. They're going to lose tonight 14 to nothing, but a lot of improvement between last week and this week. Coming up next, our Capital Blue Cross post-game report, including our Hoffman Ford Player of the Game, our Capital Regions Insurance HC Play of the Game, and more. This is High School Sports Live to me on Fox 43.2. So a while back, I thought to myself, I'm never gonna own a home. I'm gonna have to rent forever. I didn't have money for a down payment. I had no credit history, and I just got out of a divorce. But PHFA showed me that home ownership is possible. They offer me a low interest mortgage and a way to manage the closing cost. To me, this is more than just my home. It's a huge accomplishment and a new chapter in my life, thanks to PHFA. That's everything. Receipts in the bag. Awesome. Say, how do you, like, budget? Hmm. Well, I have a spreadsheet that I update annually. Okay. And I round up on income and round down on expenses. Well, that sounds backwards, right? No, I'm pretty sure that's right. Income up, debt down. <laughs> Looks good on paper. Huh. Keep your budget in shape with our personal finance tool. Have better conversations about your money with the right people at FNM Trust. Everybody knows Hoffman has it. Did you know Hoffman has even more? There's the fully stocked Hoffman Ford Parts and Accessories Department, the Hoffman state-of-the-art collision facility, confidence in our ultra-modern service facility, peace of mind with master technicians, satisfaction with low prices. Do I really need to say it again? Hoffman has it. Only at Hoffman Ford, Colonial Park. Hoffman Ford, just what you're looking for. Hoffman more choices, more laughter, more time to play, and less need to worry. At Capital Blue Cross, we're driven by a simple goal, to go the extra mile for you through all of life's ups and downs, and to always be there when you need us. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. In the dynamic world of construction, Groff Tractor and Equipment stands as your trusted John Deere and working dealer. With our extensive range of construction, sales, and rentals, we provide the equipment you need to tackle any project. But our commitment doesn't stop there. Our comprehensive parts and service departments are there to make sure your equipment is operating at its best, minimizing downtime and maximizing productivity. Our dedicated technicians ensure your equipment operates at peak performance. Our technician internship opportunities provide a pathway to a successful career. Learn from skilled professionals and grow with us. Trust, reliability, and exceptional service. That's Groff Tractor and Equipment. Stop by, give us a call, or visit our website today for more information. Groff Tractor and Equipment, your number one source for everything under construction. And welcome back to our Capital Blue Cross post-game report. Central wins it tonight, 14 to nothing over Cumberland Valley in an outstanding game. Real grinder game here tonight. Gary Sutton, Fort Chapman with you up here on the deck uh, at Chapman Field. And I'll tell you what, uh, you, you thought Central might be leaving town very quickly with that opening drive, but it was not to be tonight. Cumberland Valley showed a lot of moxie, a lot of character here this evening. Cumberland Valley did enough to win the football game defensively. They just didn't get enough done offensively, but you can see there's a lot of promise with a young offense. Yeah, from week one to week two, you talk about how much better they got. They lost 29 points last week uh, to Mannheim Township who laid it on them. Tonight, they come out here and showed you what pride was really all about for a football team. On the other side, Central, again, very polished, looked pretty good tonight. But I thought uh, Brooklyn Nace held himself pretty well, even despite a couple of big sacks. He did a pretty good job tonight, missing only three passes all night long. Yes, he did. And on top of that, the the heck of, the running the running back was the difference in the ball game. That golf is a heck of a football player. But you look late in the game too. Carter Vaughn figured in there a little bit. Uh, you had the other guy, uh, number 24, getting in there as well. Uh, Colin Gurley with some nice catches tonight. So they mixed it up a little bit. Central York, Cumberland's defense was too good for them just to run that running back all the time. You're right. Yeah. And they were able to get enough mixture in there with a few nice fat, flat passes that picked up some first downs, kept the drives moving, and they had enough today. Let's take a look right now at our Capital Region Insurance Agency play of the game tonight. And this was a good one. This came from Cumberland Valley. I'll tell you what. This guy's shown they came into the game. 
Kind of reminds you of old uh, Kenny Stabler of the Raiders, right? I mean, you talk about yeah. data. And, and this guy, Somerville, you throw anything within five feet of that kid, he's catching it. He, and he's got that kind of attitude, just spunky. Take a look at him. We watched him for a couple years now. Look at his catch. I mean, that's just spearing the ball and bringing it down. Nobody else could have gotten to that football. And there are things that they can build on Cumberland Valley football program, no doubt, in Central York. 2-0, two big wins. Coming to the Mid-Pen Conference out of the York County League and getting W's, impressive, both on the road. And how good is this 6A in, in, in District 3? I mean, you, you talk, every night's a big game anymore. You take a look around with the Hempfields, with the Mannheim Townships, with Harrisburgs. Uh, you talk about State College, who's not in District 3, but still in part of that whole mix. No in doubt. the Mid-Pen, so you're looking at, uh, at some really great teams out there. And, of course, Central, you've got to figure them in the mix right now. Absolutely. So they show you they can win it two different ways. They shut it out tonight. Last week they win, putting 45 on the board against Central Dauphin. Now, we take a look at our Hoffman Ford player of the game. This may not be the greatest kept secret in the United States tonight, but this guy, Jules Goff, is the real deal. 29 carries, 130 yards, two touchdowns tonight, the only two touchdowns in the game. And take a look at him. Hard runner. Yes, and we talked about his ability to cut, his vision, his speed. He's got it all. He can catch, and he's not afraid to block. He has the whole package. And you take a look tonight, and that front line for Central tonight, they rebuilt that whole offensive line. They looked pretty good tonight when they needed to, and Goff, again, not getting 268 yards like last week, but in this situation tonight, he got what his team needed. They go out of here, 14 nothing winners. Our next game up is going to be next Friday night, and we're going to Elizabethtown. Lower Dauphin at Elizabethtown. That'll be a 7 o'clock game next Friday night. Looking forward to that. You can go to our website at www.hsslivetv.com for our full game schedule for the 2023 High School Sports Live broadcast schedule. Thanks to Chad Edwards and the great crew from Invicta Incorporated tonight. Thanks to Fox 43 Sports. Travis Sparks, our stack guy, and, of course, the best color guy in the business right here on Analyst. We're talking about Fort Chapman. And thank you for watching this week's High School Sports Live broadcast. Again, Central wins at 14 to nothing. We take you now to a special Raw Sports Combine. You're going to find all about that next right here on High School Sports Live TV. I'm Gary Sutton. Have a great evening, everyone. What's the deal, y'all? It's your boy, Big Star Raw Sports.